Today on Dr. Phil, they've dated for over three years. I want to see a ring on my finger or goodbye. He says he's not ready. I've been burned. I do not want it to happen again. Will he commit or quit? You need to make up your mind. You're going to marry this girl? And a wedding shocker. You found out you married somebody that was still married. With an unbelievable twist. Are you still intimate with him? This is going to be a changing day in your life. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. It matters to you. That's what I want to talk about. Are you ready to move? Let's do it. Go, Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil. So he loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. I don't know if he loves me. Wouldn't it be great if there was a formula to get your man to commit? Now, after three years of dating, Josie and Curry are on opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to marriage. Will he commit or will she have to quit? Now, here's what Josie has to say. Curry and I, we've been dating for over three years. I wanted to be married, but he will not pop the question. He won't commit. I tell Curry either commit, quit, or hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back. I do not want to waste five or ten years. My time clock is ticking. He tells me he can't live without me. He loves me a lot. But w what's the problem? I don't understand what is the problem. I'm going to leave him. I'm not going to put up with this anymore. I'm done. Well, her boyfriend, Curry, claims that his ex-wife is holding him back. Take a look. What's my problem? Why can't I commit? Josie is the whole package. She's marriage material. She's smoking hot. Come on. I'm sure there's 10 guys waiting behind me right now going to jump at the chance. Reason number one, I've been married and divorced before. I've been burned. I do not want it to happen again. Reason number two, I'm taking on the responsibilities of another person's <laughs> livelihood. A little bit scary to me. <laughs> Reason number three, things are great now, but what happens after we get married and what if things change i've seen it happen before in my last marriage and i don't want that to happen again <laughs> if something doesn't change soon she's gonna dump me well josie and curry come on out let's see what they have to say hey how you doing good Hi, Dr. josie how are you i'm good how are you have a seat oh Oh. <laughs> so, sounds to me like you're in a lot of trouble. I'm in big trouble. So, and you are fit, you're, you're tired of waiting. Right. How long have you been waiting? Uh, over three years. Over three years? Yeah. Okay, why, why have you done that? Why have you sat around for three years waiting for him to get it in gear? Uh, I thought I'll give him a break, but that's been a long break. The, <laughs> that is a long break, yeah. right? Yeah. So. What is it about her that just doesn't do it for you? Oh, it, <laughs> look, it's, this audience is going to lambaste me. I just know it. But, uh... Hey, they call them as they see them. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's, it's nothing about her that doesn't do it for me, believe me. Um, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, I mean, seriously, if she was the right one for you, y you would think you would do that, right? Yeah, logically yeah. speaking, yeah, I suppose. But you don't. You know she wants to. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think she's a nice person? Oh, absolutely, she's wonderful. Do you think she's a sweetheart? Absolutely. Is, is she kind? Absolutely. Does she do things for you? Yeah. Do, do you love her? Yeah. Do you think she's attractive? Oh, come on. <laughs> She's smoking hot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so basically, if you marry her, you'd be marrying way over your head. I'd be marrying up. Ab <laughs> absolutely. I'd yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, no, yeah, seriously, I know seriously. that. I mean, people say that to me all the time. I mean, they say, clearly, 
they think she's a trophy wife, but we're only three years apart. I mean, you get this is a good deal. Absolutely, and it is. And let me let me back up a little bit here if I can. But it, you know, well, you've been backing up for three years. <laughs> yeah. But go ahead. When we met, uh, th things have been great. We have a great time together. She rides on the back of the motorcycle with me. We go hiking. She does all kinds of great stuff together with me. And and uh, and, and it's been great. She's got her place. I got my place. Uh, we we get together and things are good. But then you know the economy hit. I got laid off, and times are tough. And uh, a position opened up in Vegas. Um, and so, so you moved to Vegas, and now you have a long-distance so, relationship. So now, and you think that's not going to work? I'm faced with, you know, I, I have a decision I need to make. But the the issues that I dealt with in my previous marriage, it's it's just kind of holding me back, and well, you know, I don't that, know what to do. Well, actually, I'm going to help you with that. But I didn't bring you here today to force this. You don't want to force him into it, no, right? No. If he doesn't want you. He doesn't you, want to then. You accept that, right? right it's not that he right. doesn't want to, it's that he doesn't want you. Right. That's what that's what it boils down to, right? I mean, I just call him no, the way I see that, him. No, no, here. No, seriously. That's... Seriously. Uh-huh. Here's the deal. You have you have you held back or have you given him your best? I gave him my best. So you've been all that you can be. Right. And you put your heart into it. Right. You've been passionate about it. Right. You've loved, you've committed. Uh, yes, I love him, I care about him. He means everything to me. Okay. And based on results, uh -huh. that hasn't been good enough. Right. And if he's going to keep up with this result, um, I'm going to have to dump him and move on. Yeah. Well, okay. Ouch. Now, see, you don't like the way Ouch. this. You don't like the way this sounds. I understand. I now, we we put a poll up on the website because we put y'all's story up on on our website before you ever got here, and we said, should Curry marry Josie? You can go to Dr. Phil right now and vote, should Curry commit or quit? All right, so I want you to vote online. You can go there right now. We're going to get back to that in a minute. Now, you said something that I thought was a very valid question, and, and I'm going to answer it for you. You said, there's no reason why I shouldn't marry her. I just can't decide, and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Would you like to know why? Yeah, uh, I can absolutely. tell you why. Because here's the here's the I'm going to tell you that after the break. But here's what it amounts to: she has given you her absolute best, mm -hmm. and based on results, you've said it's not good enough. Well, I didn't actually say that to her. I mean, I just I said based on results, you've said she's not good enough. And that's what you're hearing, right? I mean, that's right, what you get. Because right, right. you put your best out there, and he said, no, not so much. Yeah, Pass. yeah. Uh, right? doesn't have, Dr. Yeah. Phil, it doesn't have anything to do with her. It, well, it really doesn't. I mean... So don't it, take it, it personal. No, no, what I mean is... Is that what you're saying? Well, <laughs> don't take it personal that he won't marry you. It, re it, really, it really doesn't have anything to do... I mean... I, it, that's it, what I don't understand. Would you like to understand? Yes. Would you like to understand? Yeah. After the break, I'm going to make it exceedingly <laughs> clear. Tomorrow on Dr. Phil, she's spoiled. Instead of playing with marbles, Chelsea would play with diamonds and rubies. She's a moocher. Did you steal from your grandmother? Yeah. Did you get your brother's credit card and run up $11,000? I did. And she's blaming her family. You keep criticizing them because they're rich. They won't let me do the things I want to do in life. So you steal $50,000 in a BMW? That's tomorrow. I was married for 15 years. It was terrible, really bad marriage, just awful. The intimacy definitely went away. We don't want that again. I don't want to experience going through a divorce again. There's absolutely no similarities from my ex-wife to Josie. The polar opposite, we've never lived together. What if we're not compatible? What if she hates the way I brush my teeth or vice versa or something like that, you know? Okay, where, where are you from? I'm from Lebanon. Lebanon? The Middle East, yes. And you've been here how long? Uh, over 20 years. Over 20 years? Yes. And, and you've known Curry for how long? Uh, over three years. <clears throat> so over three years. And 
you're totally committed. You're in love with him. You yes. want to marry him. Yes, I do. Now, y'all aren't living together because no. you just feel like that's not feel, the right thing to do. Yeah, I feel it's not right to live together. It's just my belief. I know it might work for somebody else, for other people, but it doesn't work for me. I feel he has to be married to me. Right. That's how I feel. Okay. And, um, and so you moved from Seattle to Vegas for your job. Mm -hmm. And um, do you miss her? Absolutely. You, you miss her every day? Yeah, I miss her every day. Yeah. Would you miss her really bad if she rode off into the sunset with somebody that could make a decision? Yeah. Yeah, that would, that would definitely break my heart. I think about, I think about it every day. And, yeah. you know, sometimes I, I sit and I think, come on, let's just, let's just do it. What am I waiting for? What am I waiting for? And then something clicks in the back of my head and I just go, ah, oh, you just, that, that whole stigma of what happened in the past. And I know that that's, that's wrong. She's not like my ex well, at all. Let me tell you what's clicking in the back of your head, because you may not be aware of this. But see, we don't react to what happens in the world. We don't react to what we see. We don't react to who we're with. We react to what we say to ourselves about what we see. Okay, so, you know, you see a picture. You don't react to the picture. You say, I like it or I don't like it. And based on what you say, that's how you react. And you've been married before, mm -hmm. and it didn't work out right. Mm -hmm. And so you have what I call tapes. It's like elevator music that runs in your head mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah, yeah. You have tapes about women. Now, they were actually beliefs just about your ex, but you've actually generalized them to other women. Would you agree? I suppose you're right. Yeah. Well, let's just think about it. All right, I, I brought this out because I'm going to write it down for you because since it's taken you three years to figure this out, <laughs> I thought that you might need to see this in black and white. I appreciate that. That's, okay. That's, now, yeah. I wrote down, you said your ex-wife lied to you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so if you've generalized that, then you have a tape that says women lie. That's one of your concerns, right? Mm -hmm. She manipulated you, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have a tape in your head that says women manipulate, right? Mm -hmm. You said that she threatened you all the time. Mm -hmm. So... You say women threaten, okay? Mm -hmm. You said she criticized you. Mm -hmm. So you say women are critical, yeah. okay? You said she attacked you verbally, emotionally, right? That she was abusive. Mm -hmm. So you say women are abusive and attack, okay? You said <laughs> that you were afraid. So you apparently think women are scary. <laughs> okay? Now, I could go on and on and on. And one of the things you said that really stuck out to me, when all of this was going on, you said you were helpless to change it. So... Here's this guy walking around in the world just saying women lie, women are manipulative, women are threatening, women are critical, women are abusive. And then here comes you. Yes. And so he looks at you with all of this elevator music playing in his head. Not a pretty music. Not a pretty music. <laughs> Not a pretty music. It's all about nope. you. I mean, you didn't do any of this, did you? No, no, no none. Did she lie to you? No, Manipulate not. you? Never. Threaten you? Criticize you? Attack you? Abuse you? Scare you? No. Make you feel helpless or trapped? She did scare me when I met her, because, I mean, look at her. <laughs> yeah, that ain't what you ought to be scared about. You ought to be scared about that several million people are seeing her on national television right now and getting to know that she is available. Uh, oh, man. Oh, you kidding me. And you know the thing that, that gets me the most out of all of this? Mm -hmm. You're happy to be out of your marriage, right? You're happy that yeah, your ex is gone? Yeah, absolutely. She is controlling you and dominating you this very second. She owns you. Yes. She owns you. I never yes. thought of that. I never thought of it that way. Yes. She is coming between you and her right now. 
That's true. Never thought of it that way, but you're right. She owns you. You said she manipulated you before. She's manipulating you right now. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I <laughs> had all this stuff planned that I was going to say to you when I came out here, and now I'm speechless. <laughs> because he's right. What am I going to say to that? <laughs> well, I don't right. know, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what I was afraid of. <laughs> well, I mean, seriously. She owns you. She, you're like a marionette, and she, she gets you over there close to her, and she jerks you back. Oh, boy. I never thought of it that way before. How am I doing? You are absolutely right. 100%, I agree with you. More than 110%. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I just hope you absorb it. I'm taking it in, baby. We'll be right back. Let's check on our poll online. 46% of online voters think Curry should commit, and 54% think they should call it quits. Wow. You know why? Why is that? They're thinking if, if you got to talk him into it, don't bother. Hmm. Don't bother. Right. And you know, I've, I, I, I've said it before, marriage is hard enough Right. if two people are kicking, fighting, and scratching to get to each other. Right. I mean, if he's willing to climb the mountain, swim the stream, slay the dragon, <laughs> and fight his way to your door, and if you got to track him down like a cheetah on a gazelle, <laughs> um, then I, I guarantee you women are thinking, if he wants you, he better come get you. Right, right. Is well, what you're saying. Am right. I right? Right. I mean, that's what women are yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? I, I get that. And I, I figured the majority of people would, would think that. Uh, but the thing is, is things were, things were great when we were together up in Seattle. And really, honestly, the only thing that tore us apart was the fact that I needed a job. And, and kind of secretly, I was hoping she'd come with me to Vegas, and um, that hasn't happened yet. It's been a month and a half. I just moved there. And it's not going to happen. I'm not going to move <laughs> to Vegas. I am not. Gonna, I am not. Here's the thing. You, you just said, so let me, I'm just trying to help you yeah. here, guy to no, guy. I, I, you know, yeah. forget about these I'm, guys. I'm with just you. you. Okay. You said in Seattle everything was great mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. It wasn't great for her, am I right? Right, you're right. Because she's sitting there thinking, why am I not enough for him? Yeah. Why am I not good enough? But, why? but she is. No, no, she, no, she I'm telling is. you what she's thinking. Yeah. I'm telling you what she's thinking. This is what you're thinking. And she's thinking, I, you know, I didn't do anything to him. I didn't lie to him. I didn't manipulate him. I didn't criticize him. I didn't hurt him. I didn't trap him. All I did was love him. Mm -hmm. Right. And whatever I have to offer, it apparently isn't good enough. And that makes me frustrated. Well, it yeah. makes me mad. It makes me angry sometimes. It's like, why? What did I do to deserve this? I don't deserve this. Yeah. You know? And I don't want to put up with this anymore. I get to a point right now, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. There is plenty of other guys around. Babe. Honestly, babe, you, you need to know that it's, 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 not, it's not you. It doesn't have anything to do with you. Hey, all these guys are <laughs> chiming in. I can hear them right now. But, but seriously, between you and I, it, it's, it's not, it, you are enough for me, mm. honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, I'm, and I'm taking all this in, honestly. I, the past couple days that we've spent together, talking about all this stuff really honestly makes me realize all the things that, that I do love about you. I know, but I want to see a ring on my finger soon or goodbye. I am done. I'm done. I'm just telling you how I feel. Three and a half years, it's, it's enough. It's and enough. You're not getting any younger. I'm not. <laughs> feel it biological clock ticking? Yes, yes. <laughs> That's what she's thinking. Yes. 
That's, the, that's what she's thinking. I'm not saying you're getting old, but that's, I'm telling I'm him what you're thinking. That. I am <laughs> thinking that. He, he's right. He's absolutely right. I am thinking that. And I don't want to deal with that anymore, and I don't want to be laying in bed at night thinking about it or thinking when I'm going to see you again. I can't fly and see you to Vegas back and forth. I have a job. And it wastes a lot of money. I can't do that anymore. I can't. You need to make up your mind soon or done. I'm done. So, you're going to let her inspire you? Or are you going to let her control you? I, I think I'm, I'm going to take the first part. Yeah. You going to marry this girl? You're trying to get me to do this no, on, on national TV no, here. No, I'm not. I, I am not. I am not. These ro forget the rose petals. That's not. There's nothing to do with it. I, I'm not. I, I'm just saying. That's that's her question. She's she's saying put up or shut up. You yes. don't have to do it right now. Okay. You have to do it right now. I'm not trying to trap you into something here at all. Okay. But I want you to know that she feels like she has put up enough, and it's time for you to match it or walk. Yes. Yeah. Yes, true? it's true. Or hit the red, yeah. hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more. Just <laughs> tough. Uh, yeah, I I had to get to this point. All right, you need to give this some thought. Now I'm going to talk okay. to you before the end of the show. Okay. All right. Next, we're going to meet a woman who thought she was having a dream wedding, that she was marrying the love of her life, and she discovered it was all just a big lie. John gave me a fairy tale wedding. It was beautiful. All our friends, our family, it was just perfect. But our marriage was not real. I just can't trust them. The ring, the dress, and madly in love with the man of her dreams. Melissa thought she had the ultimate commitment until she discovered that the entire wedding was fake. Everything about our marriage and relationship had been a lie from day one. I met John about two years ago. He swept me off my feet, and we were just all gung-ho about getting married. I went dress shopping. It just went hog wild. John initially told me that he was married twice. Right before the wedding, I found out that he had a third wife, and he's been divorced for about two years. At that point, it was too late emotionally to go back. All I wanted to do was go forward because I was so in love with this guy. John gave me a fairy tale wedding. It was beautiful. The fish pond, the DJ was awesome. The head table was gorgeous. All our friends, our family, it was just perfect. I never saw our marriage certificate. I just had a gut feeling. I asked him for months, can I see it? Can I see it? He's like, no, my sister has it. Finally, I just drove myself into the courthouse. I said, well, can you tell me if I'm married? So they looked up John's name and saw the first marriage, saw the second marriage, saw the third marriage. First two were divorced, the third one still married. I was betrayed by him because our marriage was not real. I waited a long time to fall in love with someone, but it's not real love. He lies all the time. My heart's still connected to him, but the trust part is what separates me giving him my heart. He says he loves me, but if you love someone, you don't do the things that, that he's done. I just can't trust him. Okay, so in August of 09, you have this beautiful wedding, but you, you never saw the marriage certificate. No. He's like, don't worry about it. I'll, I have a friend, you know, who can get our, our paperwork. We'll be fine. And, um, you know, we'll sign it and send it in. I didn't really know legalities of things. So I'm like, cool. You know, I'll do my thing down here. We'll get the paperwork. We'll sign it at the wedding and we'll have it. We'll be good. And his sister married you. Yeah. Okay. So you would ask him about this and he would just get mad when you were leading up to it because it... First, you, you thought he had been married once, then twice, then three times? Yeah. This unfolded across time. He didn't tell you about three times to begin with? Not until the third one he didn't tell me about until after he snagged me. After he got my heart and I started really liking him and I'm like, you know what? Good people mess up. He's never met someone like me. I'm special. I'm different. 
and you know maybe this is the time to give him a new start you found pictures of him with a woman yeah a, a compromising pictures and, and you yeah. said he said this is just somebody he dated mm -hmm. Because I turned, don't remember her name. I don't know who she is. Doesn't remember her name. Found a wedding band, a trinket box with I love you, <laughs> the whole nine yards. I was like... But this know. woman he couldn't remember the name of turned out to be his third wife? Yeah. Of 14 years? Well, they were together. I think I said that wrong, but it was a total of 14 years they were together, but they were married for almost 10. But he couldn't remember her name? Nope. And I know her name. Yeah, so, <laughs> so when you found out that you married somebody that was still married, he wasn't subject to criminal charges because it wasn't a real wedding. Mm -mm. I don't know what he told his sister, but she went online and supposedly she took a test to be able to marry someone. Mm -hmm. But later on down the road, we had dinner and she says, you know, I, I, I knew about you know, things with John and, and the other one, you know, his third wife, and um, I was going to tell you if he didn't tell you soon, but I don't know w at what point she and knew. He told you that he graduated from the University of Alabama? <laughs> yeah. Did he? No. he? no. No, he never went to college. He said he blew his knee out, and he lost his scholarship through the rest of Alabama, and he never even went to college. Well, because we talked to the university of Alabama and they gave us a statement the school was unable to locate either a degree or an enrollment record for the subject of your verification request so he didn't go there has he told you now that he didn't go there well because I unraveled it well you're gonna hear what John has to say next we'll be right back Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil it's Avery's first birthday. Repeat after me. You can't change what you don't acknowledge. <laughs> Which grandparent? This is good for you. That's my screen. Is the better babysitter. All right, good match. Plus, she's lost over 100 pounds. Think she looks good? <laughs> but hasn't gained enough compliments from her husband. Do not pause yeah. when I ask you this stuff. <laughs> I am lobbing you softball, buddy. <laughs> That's Monday. This is our wedding band that we had picked out together. I went to an appraiser to see how much the ring was worth, and I find out that it's cubic zirconia. It's not even real. He said he paid $900 for it. He said the gold was real and the diamonds on the side were real. I said all you had to do was tell me you couldn't afford it. As long as it was a real ring, I didn't care what size it was, as long as it came from your heart, because it meant something. It was just another lie. Well, the ring wasn't the only fake thing about her wedding. It turns out that Melissa's entire marriage was a sham because he was still married to somebody else. Now, we interviewed John over the phone, uh, and he agreed to be on the show, but then he changed his mind. Several times. Uh, several Back times. Back and forth. In fact, you changed your mind several because times. Because of him manipulating me, that he, it would ruin my life and my <clears throat> daughter's life. I said, I have nothing to lose. You do. <laughs> Well, he admits to lying about his divorce, and he also said that I basically lied to Melissa about how many times I was married, the fact that I was still married, and how long I was married. I lied about everything. I kept lying because I was afraid to lose her. If I told her the truth, she wouldn't have stayed with me. I even lied to my sister and told her I had the marriage license when I didn't. I don't even think my sister knew that I wasn't divorced yet. It's not in my personality to lie, but once I lied, I had really? to keep lying to cover it up. <laughs> That's what he He's said. He's only done it for two years. So you don't have anything to do with him now? The only reason I have anything to do with him right now is because financially I can't do it. And that's the only reason. And I have a 13-year-old daughter, and I feel like I'm going to fail her. Um... It's the main reason why I talk to him, because he calls me every day. He doesn't even give me a chance to call him. He doesn't give me a chance to heal. He just is just calling all the time. I miss you. I love you. I'm like, John, you're not giving me a chance. I can't even tell if I miss you or even ever love you again. I don't know. I got a bell going off in my head here. Um, are you still intimate with him? We have been, yes. Even after everything you, you found out. And the main reason for that is because he 
neglected me for a long time and it, it almost felt good to be wanted or hugged or or caressed even if there was no emotion involved with him and I might as well do it with him and not someone else I'm not like that I hear you <laughs> my friends think the same thing well Melissa's best friend and bridesmaid Roxanne is here she says that they shouldn't stay together. So, what, what do you think about this? As this started happening and unraveling, I thought, wow, this guy really loves her. Um, and as things kept unfolding and I kept learning more about what John has put Melissa through and how much he contacts her constantly, he manipulates her, I, I've, he's controlling her. I, I think now that she's gone, He's going into this mode, that, a panic mode. He doesn't have her to control anymore. So she definitely needs to, to get the distance and, and move on. Have you talked to him since you've been here? <laughs> how, did, how did that come to pass? Um, I'm, I'm a big person on, on telling the truth. And I didn't tell him what I was. I ended up making the decision to come. And. Um, last night I called him because I was on the plane already so he couldn't stop me this time because it took forever to even get here trust me I, we went back and forth and he kept stopping me and I finally got on the plane and I'm like I have to tell you something so I told him and he just went irate I just can't believe you lied to me <laughs> I'm like I've been real with you I've given you my heart I've given you everything I have in my heart and love you so much and you're going to get on me about lying one time. And I just told you the truth the next day because I can't hold it back anymore. Well, isn't that kind of the pot calling the kettle black? <laughs> yeah. I mean, did, yeah. did you say that to him? You, 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 I told him, I say, you're just like ridiculous. Well, if he wanted this situation to work, then wouldn't you think that he would been the first one through the door here and sat down and said, Dr. Phil, I have messed up. I, I want to make this right. Tell me what I need to do. Wouldn't you think he would have leaned into this instead of run away from it? We found out our cat had um, diabetes, severe diabetes, and then he, it just fell right into his lap. We can't go. Because <laughs> your cat was sick. Yeah. And I'm like, John, you know what? I didn't even, I just... Is, is he a veterinarian? No. <laughs> Our staff has talked to him, I don't know, dozens of times, times, 40, 50 times, and I'm told that they, he came up with this cat story. They offered to board the cat mm -hmm. for him. They offered to get a veterinarian to, to oversee everything and take mm -hmm. care of the cat in your absence. They, they, they took away every obstacle, and it just seemed like he just thought, you know, I'm not going to come here because Dr. Phil's going to ask me questions I don't have. He didn't want to get thrown under the bus, he said. He didn't want to be humiliated. He didn't want to lose his business. He coaches softball. He didn't want to jeopardize that. I'm like, if you really love me, you would do whatever it took. Well, but you are here, and I hope you're glad you're here. because you. you're you. <laughs> you're, well, you're so smart. Like, you see things, and you just by the first set of people. I'm just like, oh. Like, I didn't think it that way. Yeah. You just have a way of like reaching in and pulling out without even trying. <laughs> well, obviously an intelligent woman. <laughs> it, um, oh my God. I, I would very much like to get you some help there at home. Someone that you can sit down without him, not marriage counselor, not couples counseling, but just you and, and if your daughter, if you want at some point, to sit down and get your focus, get your bearings back on your self-esteem, your self-worth, and recognize that this isn't about you. He brought this toxicity to you, and you need to rise above that and decide what you're going to do with your life. And I want to get you some help to do that. This is a very important first step. And I, I hope women that are out there that are seeing warning signs and don't want to see them because they don't want them to be true, take a lesson from what you're saying. You're using your life here, and I think that's a great thing. If you had this to do over again, you wouldn't deny those warning signs. No. I'm proud that you came. I'm proud that you're using your life and telling this story. And I'm proud that you're standing up on your own. And thank you for coming here. Okay? So we're going to get you some help with this. Because I think you need it. Thank you much.
Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right. I'm going to talk to another couple here in a minute that says the happiest day of their life turned into the worst experience of their life when the wedding planner scammed them out of $30,000. We'll be right back. A woman who served time for pretending to have cancer and scamming people for money to pay medical bills now faces charges for a new scam that targeted engaged couples. Tanya Clark was arrested Friday night, accused of taking nearly $30,000 from another couple, promising them a grand wedding at the Canyons Resort. This is just a nightmare yes. scenario. So you guys get engaged and you think, we need a wedding planner. Yes. You had forked over $30,000. Yes. It was devastating. This is just unbelievable. So this woman had been in jail for another scam before this. So she's just a con artist. How, yeah. did, you, how did she find you or you find her? Well, I went on to a wedding website and requested some information and she contacted me through that and said she only works on references and, and referrals and she provided me with what, four to six references and I contacted them and um, we met with her and she was nice. We let her into our home. I cooked for her. We were friends. And she paid for a lot of the things that she lined up with a stolen credit card? Yes. So that meant those things weren't really paid for. Nothing was paid for. Nothing. So you had to pay for all of that. Again, yes. And then you had to pay extra for what wasn't done. Yes. Think of all the couples that are watching this right now. They're thinking, oh my gosh, references seem legitimate, got burned for 30, ultimately 50,000 bucks. What's the lesson here? What would you do differently? Oh, <laughs> everything. Uh, run to Vegas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he would. He tried to get me to run, but I'm like, no, I want a wedding. I mean, <laughs> I waited so long to meet the man of my dreams, and she took the one experience that all women are supposed to have and smashed it, smashed it to pieces. So what I would do differently is not hire her. Yeah. I would not hire her. Um, I would run away as well. I wouldn't do this again. This has got to be putting stress on you guys. Yeah, Are you, has it affected the way you two get along? It's not easy. I mean, the money situation is really tough. Because we didn't plan on starting our life together being broke and in debt. So that's a little tough. It's one thing to lose the day. Yeah, yeah. That. It's another thing to lose the money. But if you lose the relationship because the stress gets you and you just start barking at each other just out of frustration, that would be the real tragic loss here. And it's what's called non-directional venting. You know, it's like you're really mad at her. You're really mad at, at things that have nothing to do with the two of you. But because you're handy, you just kind of can take it out on each other. And you got to really guard against doing that. You got to really say, look, we don't have enough money here. I mean, clearly, all of a sudden, we're $50,000 in debt, and our hearts are hurting. We're upset about this, but we just can't take it out on each other. And you got to recognize when that's happening and just say, hey, wait a minute. This is exactly what Dr. Phil talked about. This is exactly what he said. I'm just... I, I haven't got closure on this yet. It's still an open wound, and I'm so upset, and I'm taking it out on you, and I'm sorry. Let's just, let's not do that. Let's just stop this. Let's go walk around the block. Let's go do something different. I mean, you got to label it so you don't do it, because this, too, will pass, and you will have a great story to tell your grandkids. I mean, seriously. <laughs> you have to meet you. <laughs> just, think when you're, just think when your daughters get married or your sons get married, you can say, okay, sit down, because we're going to talk about this. You're going to Vegas. No. Yeah, uh, and we're coming. <laughs> I mean, you, you've, got a, you've got a story to tell, but you don't want to lose the relationship in this, right? Okay, now not only did Nate and Tina pay 30000 to the planner, they had to pay the vendors 20 grand. Uh, obviously, they opted for no honeymoon because they were broke at that point. So I decided that they could use one, and so did the folks at Rancho Valencia Resort and Spa in Rancho Santa Fe, California. So we're going to fly you guys there so you can have that honeymoon that you've been wanting. And it is a spectacular. Look at this place. It is unbelievable.
Three days and two nights in the Garden Oasis. Spa treatments, breakfast, dinner, everything. We want you to look back on your honeymoon with good thoughts. So at least we can put a little bit of silver lining around this. This is a terrific, terrific place, okay? Thank you. All right, fair enough. We'll be right back. Well, so, Curry, have you been thinking about this? We, have we scared you away with these wedding nightmares here? No, I, no, really not. I feel really bad for these folks, man. That's just a terrible deal. Um, yeah. I commented, I said, man, I'm glad we're not the ones in that position. Yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, you. your turn. No, you, you, you keep looking at me like I'm wanting you to propose to her or something, and actually I'm not. I, what I want you to do is I really want you to go home. I want you to be very, very thoughtful about this. I want you to think about what I said. Take your power back from this woman you were married to and, and do what's right for you and, and what's right for her. And you're at a point that you need to marry her or you need to respect her enough to tell her. Yeah. And yeah. And let her go. So I, th I hope you guys yeah. will be very thoughtful about this. I appreciate that. Take your power back. Don't make her pay for the sins of yeah. one that's gone before yeah. her. Because it's not her fault. She it's didn't not do her it. Fault at all. She didn't do that stuff. All she's doing is is sitting there loving you. Yeah. And uh, and so you, you need to be thoughtful about this, and then you need to let us know exactly what y'all are going to do. Yes. All right. Yes. Thank you. Now, if you want to know what to do to be safe in planning your wedding or a party, you can go to drphil.com. We're going to have some very important guidelines for you there. And if you are in a commitment crisis, you can go to drphil.com. You can click on Be on the Show. You can tell us your story. We deal with all kinds of issues here. So go there, write us a letter, and you could be right here on stage, uh, hopefully working things out. I want to thank all of my guests for being here today. Thanks, guys. So long. Determined to make her 16 year old daughter a model that she has her doing chores in high heels. No pain, no gain. Are some moms. This is her dream, but I'm motivating her. You can't be serious. Pushing their kids too far. This is about you living vicariously through her. No, it's not. Were no, you a not. model? Yes, I was. My mom forced me into it. Did your ears just hear what your mouth said? Some pushy moms Turn around. are even hiring professional coaches. We got some work to do. You said, I'll do anything to get her to Miss USA or Miss Universe. She just said, I don't want to be Miss USA or Miss Universe. Have y'all met? This is going to be a changing day in your life. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. It matters to you. That's what I want to talk about. Are you ready in the booth? Let's do it. Show it, I can tell. Well, today we're talking to moms who say they are pushing their daughters to be the best in pageants, music, and modeling. But the question is, are these moms crossing the line? Are they going too far? Now, Gina says she has no problem pushing her 16-year-old daughter, Sydney, to become a supermodel and will not accept anything less than the best from her. But Sydney says her mom is just pushing her way too hard. See what you think. We have to get this. This has to be done right. I want my 16-year-old daughter to be America's Next Top Model. Actually, better. Are you the let them know they can smell your It ain't on the floor. It's on you. Sydney has modeled in over 100 events. You walk like in them. So you can take those damn shoes off right now. I push Sydney very hard. And quit walking like you got a stick 
She makes me feel bad about myself. I told her, if you're serious about doing this, then this is your job. Isn't this what you want to do? Do your job. Is this your job? If I'm wasting my time, Cindy, we can just cut the right now. You're going to put those heels on and you're going to walk your butt down that runway like you've never done it before. It's hard to do the time in it. That's why you keep doing it over and over and over and over until you get it. We got all day. If your legs is about to fall off, then I know my job is done. Are you the yes. Are you the That's the way you got to do it. On the days when my daughter is modeling, we have a very detailed routine. No. Sit. It's time to get up. 5 a.m., do our hair and makeup. If this is what you want to do, you should get yourself up. We prepare her diet. No junk food. Carrots, oranges, crackers, plenty of water. That's what you have to have. She'll say, you'll get fat if you don't listen to me. Everything that you eat puts weight on you. Fruits and vegetables only. When you walk your ass up in there, they gonna say, when your fat ass lose that 10 pounds, then you come back and see us. We do exercise. You wanna be the chunky girl that can't get in the dress? Lay your ass all the way flat down and then come up. You weigh a buck or five soaking wet. You can lift your ass up off the floor. They don't want no fat models. 100 jumping jacks. Smile. What? I'm Smile because like, you're supposed to enjoy it. There you go. That's what I want to see. Walking up and down the stairs in her heels. I can see the workout in the knees. I see the point in the knees. That's letting me know that you're working something off. No pain, no gain. She practices in her heels from one to two hours straight. You want the whole audience to say, woo, mm, she bad. I make her do all of her chores in her heels. I wanted to quit three times in the past year just because of my mom. This is your dream. Isn't this what you want to do? This is your job. As you watch yourself on tape, what do you think? I think that I'm teaching her how to get the job done. I'm showing her that this is your job, and if you're going to do this job, you have to do it right. You think that's over the top? No, I don't. Okay, so that just seems reasonable to you. Yes. Okay. Because um, out there in the world, it's, they're going to be much tougher, a lot tougher than I was on her. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. You said something, <laughs> you said something right at the end of that. You said, if this is your dream, then you do it. Get your ass up off the floor. Exactly. Is this her dream or is this your dream? This is her dream. This is her this dream. This is what she wants to do. She said, Well, how come you're working at it harder than she is? If it's her dream, if it's her passion, if it's her identity, if it's her calling, then there would be a singleness of purpose there. And it sounds to me like this is all about you and not at all about her. No, it's about her. But I'm motivating her. If this, we don't Actually, have to, you're not, but go ahead. We don't have time for her to be wasting my time. She, we don't have time for her to be wasting an agency's time. We don't have time. If, when she goes out there on that runway and they want her to do a job and they're hiring her to do that job, they want it right the first time because there's 10 other young girls, smaller, prettier, ready to snatch her spot. And if she said, oh, my God, I messed up and I didn't stay up late tonight because I was too tired, I just didn't feel like doing it, that agency that's hiring her, they don't give a damn about that. They want to see it right the first time. And how old is she? She's 16. Do you care about her? I love her to death. I'll do anything in the world for her. Well, so do, do you think that, that this is more about you than it is about her? No. Why it, are you the one that's doing all the talking. Why are you the one doing the schedule, doing the discipline, doing all of the things? Why is she not doing any of this? Because when she gets to that point that Sydney will tell me, I want to do this, Mom, and this and that, then that day come along that there's a school dance or something that's happening. Well, I want to go and I want to go to the dance or I want to go hang out with my friend. Or I don't feel like getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And you know, come Saturday morning, you have a shoot to go do or something like that. They don't care about you wanting to go and hang out with your friends. You have to be You on should point. care about her and wanting to go hang out with her friends. I do. She's but 16. This, this is her job. She when shouldn't I, have a job. She's 16. Her child labor laws. She doesn't have a job. This, She's 16. She needs to be a child. She needs to be 16. And there, exactly. But there are plenty, plenty, just 
Justin Bieber, he's working every day. This is his job. He wants to do this. This is her job. She wants to be a supermodel. Tyra Banks didn't get to where she's at by sitting on her ass and saying that when that audition comes, well, I'm just going to go and I look flawless so I can get out there and I can just come as I am. No, she had to work at it to get to where she's at. And if Sydney's going to get out there and do it, she's going to be the best. I'm not going to accept anything less. Same, I'm just as hard on her with her schoolwork and anything else that she wants to do. I'm not going to accept anything less. You can't be serious. I, I'm dead serious. You can't be I'm serious. You serious. can't be, your parents can't do that for you. If it's a passion, you embrace it. If it's a passion, you want it. If it's a passion, you set your alarm. You wake up in the morning. You do the things that it takes. It's not that you've got a mother there pushing you to the point that she wants to burn out. I mean, she said she tried to quit three times in the last year because of you. And she also came back those three times because of me and said, Mom, oh, I really did. want to do this. I'm, I'm really serious about this. And if you're serious about this and you're going to do it, that's taking time away from me. That's taking time away from the other children. That's taking time away from my job. If you just want to go in and just do this as a hobby, then we can just play around with it on the weekends and I can take and pictures you okay of you and video. That. And I would be okay you with that. You would be okay I with would that. be fine with that. Yeah, but you're if right. you're yeah. going to yeah. do this and you're going to be serious yeah. about it, Everybody believes that forward. she would be okay with that. Stand on your head. Everybody believes that. Stand on your head. <laughs> Nobody's standing on her. You wouldn't be because this isn't about her. This is about you. No, it's about This her. is about you living vicariously through her. No, it's not. Were no, you a model? Not. Yes, I was. And so do, do you want her to do the same things you did or do better or what? I want her to be better than me. I want her to do much better than me. I didn't stay with my modeling because my mom forced me into it. She forced me to do it. It okay. wasn't a choice. Right. I didn't go to her right. and I didn't say, this is what I want to do. So did you, did you just, did, did your ears just hear what your mouth said? Of course, yes. You said, I quit because my mama pushed me into it. So instead, I'm now doing what? Are you not doing exactly what no. caused you to quit? No. No, I'm not doing that. Well, your mother because must actually, have been hell on I wheels then. I took her out of modeling. I stopped it because she wasn't putting her all into it. I took her out and I said, Cindy, if this is just going to be a joke to you and you just want to do it sometimes, then you know what? We're not going to put our all into this. We're not going to do this. When you come back and you're serious about this as being your job because you want to go to the top, then you come and you let me know. Well, I'm serious about my job, and my job says I need to take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> On an all-new Dr. Phil, mother-in-laws. My mom is trying to control my marriage. And son-in-laws. Terry is trying to make me out to be a monster. Face off. Do you believe he's physically abusive? Absolutely not. No, I'm not the not arguments get so no, intense. I'm not interested in any more bickering. You won't believe what happens next. I'm sending you guys backstage. Somebody's lying, and I want somebody to come back here and tell me the truth. Then on Wednesday, did she allow her ex-husband... You saw him on top of your daughter. I didn't know exactly what I saw. ...to molest her daughter. They're saying that you knew it went on. That's Wednesday. Well, Gina seems to be convinced that her way of training Sydney to be a model is the best way, even telling her that she better have blisters on her feet after practicing in heels. So this is a blood sport for you. <laughs> I, I mean, you, you, you think no pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. And what, what is the end game? What, when is enough enough? She's going she's gonna to get discovered and what? When she gets that big contract and she's at the top of her game and she's then it's time for her to move on to something else but she has to keep working at it in order for her to be her best because there's someone that's always going to be there ready to snatch her spot 
Well, Always. You, but you know she that will eventually on... happen. And, uh, and... and it will eventually happen. And when it's her time did to you... stop modeling, then she has to move on to something else. Did, did you right make now, it big? This is her. No, I stopped. I, it wasn't my intention to make it big. It wasn't my intention to. So you were just doing it. it for the fun? No, I was doing it because my mother said, "This is what you're gonna do." I was that child that. Did your mother yell no at you like that? She, I was. She was worse. Ten times worse. Ten times worse. Uh, now you, 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 come on. She was ten times worse. What did she do? Did she have like a bull she whip would, or something? She would. <laughs> close to it. Close to it. It was. Do as I say. I don't want to hear anything back. When she said smile, you better smile on point. When she said oh to get God. down Are there you and kidding my, me? you better Are you, do it on point. You're channeling your mother you, in this video. No, Are you, I'm not. you don't see that. No, I, no, I don't. No, so, I'm not. So give me your mother's version. From what you just said, you just said, do those jumping jacks. You need to smile because you like and this. And you also heard me say, Sydney, is this what you want to do? If you want to do this, then you're going to do it okay, right. So what did your mother do? G give me your mother's version. My mother's version, what? People have always said, oh, my God, Gina is gorgeous. She's beautiful. You know, you better put her in something. You better do this and that. I was already signed up before I even knew. When I came home when, from school, she's like, you have an appointment. You have to go here, this and that, this, 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 not. Mom, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't ask you what you signed up for. This is what you're going to do. And it was, yes, ma'am. All right, I know somebody who might disagree with Mom Gina here. This is a woman that was the first African-American woman to grace the cover of Vogue magazine. And since then, she's appeared on more than 500 magazine covers. Please welcome one of the original supermodels, Beverly Johnson. <laughs> You sit right here because I'm going to ask you to do my job for a minute. Oh, I'll try. <laughs> so, Beverly, how are you? Oh, I'm terrific. Do you worry when you, you you've been in this and you know how competitive it is, yes. uh, and you've looked at this from the top down, of course, because uh, there's no one that has ever been more successful, ever been uh, more iconic in this industry than yourself. But <laughs> you're too kind. But no, seriously. I mean, there's anybody on the globe doesn't know who you are. Is she pushing her too hard? Is she risking burnout here? I understand. You know, you're doing everything because you you, you love her and you want it to happen for you and for her. And there's nothing really wrong with that. But I think it's the way you go about it that's so wrong, and you so have to stop today. <laughs> So, what, what do you think about what she's saying? Of course, you can, I mean, I, I know I'm, a, I'm an old, bald, white guy. I know nothing. But you're, you're hearing from the best of the I'm best here. The best, and she's and telling you that you are going too far. I'm what, what do you think about what she's saying? I, I'm, I'm taking it all in, and I'm, I'm hearing it from the best. She knows better, you know, than anybody. And some days, you know, sometimes I do think that I'm going, you know, overboard. And I don't want to turn into that stage, Mom. I don't want to turn into my mother, you know. And I want her to love it, and I want her to enjoy it. You already it. are a stage mom. You already are your mother. Now go ahead. <laughs> but I also don't want her to be stepped on you know i want her to be strong i want her not to be easy i want her when some when it's her time to come out and there's a complication going on because i can't be there every time her to be able to step up well instead of wanting her to be strong let's want her to be smart exactly because if she's smart she can handle that Amazing. situation or any situation where it doesn't have to come from you know physical strength or raising your voice or demands and commands and because that that never works exactly. you know and it, yeah. and it can come from a place of kindness and love and yes. peace so we know that doesn't always work well <laughs> it doesn't always well, work let, let, let me let me interject here because you say that doesn't always work mm -hmm. let me tell you what you're doing never works <laughs> okay so you can go from so you can go from maybe what she's saying, and because, Beverly, what I hear you saying 
is you need a person that that knows who they are mm -hmm. and is very confident in that and as a result will not let someone take their power away yes. and, and bully them or take advantage of them in some way yes and and you know that's what you're saying you have to be what you're doing is you are demeaning her you're, you're telling her you, you think you're making her tough by beating on her but she is becoming submissive as a result and you burned out at 25 right yes. at 25 you said that enough at 25 I just I had a midlife crisis I mean I felt that I was old I was scared there were new models coming in your daughter's age mm -hmm. and I really had to you know with the help of my family and the support of my mother and the support of my faith my my, my my spiritual self that I had to start to empower and to and to build that in, in order for me to say you're 25 and when you said you had the support of your mother yes and she doesn't feel your support it's like when you pay kids for A's you know I'll give you five bucks for every A you get well Which now they're motivated by the five bucks mm -hmm. not from a okay. desire to learn or to master material or to do well on their own if you're a parent that always comes in and wakes your kid up every morning, then they never learn to wake themselves up. They, they always rely on you. It's you that does the motivation, you that provides the drive, you that provides the punctuality. They never internalize that and become self-motivated. And right now, your daughter's chance of becoming self-motivated is zero because you do all of the drive, all the motivation from the outside, so she is a complete passenger. You are creating exactly what you fear. Someone that has no drive, no confidence, no self-motivation, because it all comes from the outside in. We have to take a break. Next, we're going to meet Sydney and let you talk with her as well. We'll be right back. Gina is so determined to make her 16-year-old daughter a runway model that she put her on a strict diet, rigorous exercise plan, and even has her doing chores in high heels. The question is, is she going too far? Is there going to be backlash? Now, her daughter, Sydney, just had the opportunity to meet a world-renowned supermodel, Beverly Johnson, and uh, that was emotional for you, right? Tell me why. I want to be a model one day. She just inspires me. We have been out here talking with your mother, and we have been telling your mother that her way of working with you, her way of kind of taking a drill sergeant approach and mentality with you may not be the best way to go about this. And you've, you've quit three times, right? And, I wanted to quit three times. Do you right? really think she'll let me quit three times? <laughs> yeah, no. No, I, I don't think so. Is she pushing you too hard? Do you get tired of being yelled at? Yes, I really do. I'm very sensitive, and I can't take it. When you were just saying that you were shy and that you were, um, you know, very sensitive, you got to have thick skin in this business. I mean, you're talking about, you know, going on a casting and someone saying, you know, Hey, wow, she, she's really, your, uh, one eye is smaller than the other, and you're standing right there. And, and they do this in front of you, right? right they critique in front you of right you. there. Right in front of you, because you are your business. And if her desire to be a model doesn't weigh more than being able to take that kind of criticism, I, 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 mean, I mean, I'm not the one to make those kind of decisions, but maybe it's not the right career choice or what you want to do right now. Sydney made a, a, a statement, it's a quote, and I wrote it down uh, because I thought it was important. She said, and I quote, mom makes me hate what I love. What do you think of that? Those are the words that came from me. It's like a flashback from what I was going through and that's what I don't want. I don't want her to hate it. I want her to enjoy it. I want her to love it and I want her to have the thick, thick skin that I know she's gonna need because a lot of those girls are cruel. A lot of the people that's gonna be judging her 
are going to be cruel. And they'll say things that was a lot worse than what you heard me say. Okay, but what you're basically saying is it's like if, if, if there are abusive people in the world, I need to abuse my child so she gets used to being no, abused? No, I'm not saying that. But that's, that's what you're saying, no, exactly what you're saying. No, I'm not saying that. Everything that I do, Sydney knows, above all, I love her to death. I love her to death. And what I do comes from my heart. Now, I may not be taking the right approach, and I have to learn that too. You know, like I said, I didn't go to be that supermodel, so it's a lot of things that I have to learn. But my overall is for her to make it okay. and for her to be her best. Okay, but you're making a mistake here. You're saying that the end justifies the means. And that's just wrong-headed thinking here. I mean, one of the quotes that you said, she doesn't believe me when I tell her how I feel about the way she treats me. Now, she said she makes me hate what I love, and she doesn't believe me when I tell her how it makes me feel the way she treats me. Now, at some point, you've got to stop yelling, mm -hmm. and you've got to start listening, and understand that you, know, you have a, a beautiful daughter here, obviously. I mean, is she... Gorgeous. Yeah, she, Gorgeous. she's got, uh, she, she's got the, the gifts, the God-given gifts. And, Thank and you. And you say you can't deny those. You, sh you shouldn't deny right. your gifts. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're going to take a break here. I'm going to add some other stories to this conversation. I'm going to add a mother who says her ultimate goal is to get her 16-year-old daughter crowned Miss USA or Miss Universe. We'll add them to the mix when we come back. A drill sergeant and it comes to pageants. You're gonna look at the floor the whole time? I'm not looking at the floor. Mom needs to stay out of my way. I do push my daughter. I've had girls compete at Miss America, Miss Universe, Miss USA. Chop, 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 chop. Well, we're talking today about pushy moms or just motivators. I mean, when do you cross the line and it becomes too much? Now, Linda says she's willing to do anything to get her 16-year-old daughter, Sydney, to be Miss USA or Miss Universe. And yes, I said Sydney. We've had two Sydneys in a row here. Uh, different spelling, but same name. But Sydney says all the pressure from her mom just makes her want to quit pageants for good. Take a look. My mom is really pushy when it comes to pageants. You're, like, looking at it and thinking about it too much. I think my daughter has what it takes to be in this America. I do push my daughter. I push her in her school and pretty much everything she does. She is a drill sergeant and it comes to pageants because she wants everything to be perfect. Your hands are like everywhere and you're not smiling all the time. I will smile. No, you aren't. Yeah. Sometimes you look at the ground. During training for a pageant, Sydney and I will argue daily. There's yelling and screaming and it gets pretty tense. Are you going to look at the floor the whole time? I'm not looking at the floor. Hey, you are. She asked me to practice to walk in my kitchen. I probably have a little bit too much bounce in it. Yeah, a little bit of hesitation. It has to be more fluid. Do it like you mean it this time. I'm trying. I'm 16 years old, and I have to, like, watch my weight constantly. What were you thinking? I look disgusting. Look how fat I look. You look good. It's just you're going too fast. No, I don't. City's body shape looks fine for... A normal life, but if she wants to compete in pageants, you have to be in perfect shape, basically. I think that my mom pushes me so hard because she wishes that she were doing the pageant because she didn't get a chance to when she was a kid. Why is it a bad thing for me to push her to be her best in everything she does? All right, to help me talk about this, Beverly Johnson, one of the most iconic supermodels in history, is here. What would you change about the way mom motivates you? Well, she's very pushy. She constantly makes me do things, and sometimes I don't want to do it, but she says that I need to do it. So I just think there should be a better way of going about things than just constantly yelling and nagging. Yeah. Do you do that? I mean, I'm a nagger, and I'm a yeller, but I'm, an Ita I'm Italian, so we yell about everything. Like, I just yell. <laughs> so I, mean, I could yell it's time for dinner. Like, I yell about that, so I yell about everything. But I do nag, but it's just because I want her... If, if I'm going to invest, specifically about pageants, if I'm going to invest the amount of money it takes to enter a pageant, I expect her to try to win and do, do it you, Do you want to do pageants? 
Well, this is the story. I came home one day, and I got this phone call from a lady that was interviewing me for a pageant, which my mom signed me up for, and I had no idea that I was doing a pageant, because it's kind of like I didn't sign up for this. But after my mom and I talked about it, I was like, okay, I'll do the pageant. So I never actually signed up for it. My mom entered me in, and I got into it. And then after some talking, I agreed to doing it. Now, what bothers me is you, you said, and I wrote it down, you said, I'll do anything to get her to Miss USA or Miss Universe. I'll spend anything. I will do anything. She said, you know, I don't know. I don't like the process. I might like to be an actress or a model. What I don't want to be is Miss USA or Miss Universe. You said, this is my goal. I will do anything. I will spend anything to get her here. And she said, the one thing I don't want to do is that. <laughs> Have y'all met? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if she, I, w I wouldn't force her to do anything she didn't want to do. There's so many... Um, you, you said you would do anything to no, get her to do it. No, I wouldn't force her. Linda set up a meeting with a professional pageant coach, Kyle Haggerty, whose client, Carissa Cameron, captured the title of Miss America 2010. So here's what Kyle had to say after meeting Linda and Sydney. My name is Kyle Haggerty, and I am a professional national level pageant coach. When I walk into a family's home, first thing I do is come in and I give them a reality check. All right, um, Sydney, I'm going to talk to you a little bit. I need you to not say anything. So I've had girls compete at Miss America, Miss Universe, Miss USA, Miss Galaxy, Miss International. Basically, I say that I make girls' dreams come true. My job is to make sure that you know what you need to do to be winnable. And Linda, your primary job is cheerleader. Seriously, you cut checks and you cheerlead. If you have any issues or concerns, you talk to me about it, and then I will handle her. Mom needs to stay out of my way, period. This is their daughter's journey. This is not their journey. All right, can we look at clothes now? You are to never put this on in front of me again. One, two, go. Chop, 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 chop. Heels, earrings, please. Turn around. We got some work to do. I never tell anyone that they can't do it. Cool swirl. Beautiful. Come on, pretty. Who does your extensions? I do. <laughs> I'm a firm believer that anyone can win anything if they're willing to do what it takes to get it. <laughs> if that means a nose job, a boob job, liposuction, dance lessons, whatever it takes. Tell me why you picked this dress out. She picked it out. Mom picked the dress out. But she approved it before I bought it. Believe me, mothers like to get in the way. I need mothers to stay out of my way, let me do my job to help their daughter, and all is well. That mom does not want my wrath because she'll get it. Oh, I have something to say. I have something to say. All right, go ahead. <laughs> He's doing, he did the exact same thing. This is a co This is a professional, right? The exact same thing I was doing for Sydney. Sydney is 16 years old, five, eight and a half. No, my dad. He's not her that's mother. Different. Exactly. It's exactly. A, he's not her mother. But he said, I'm making you a winner. I'm, this is what I do. I want to make her, if she's going to have people like this, to come and tell her, you know, no, that's not going to okay, work. But and no, and, that. and, and there's got to be a lot of people that's going to do that. Beverly's point is exactly right. Because the last thing that you just said, you need to be a mother first, right? Yes. yes. You're her mother. Exactly. He's somebody that you hire to bring in. I mean, have we said anything to... Do you see any of yourself at all in Gina? She's a little bit more hardcore than I am. I, I take a different approach. I mean, Sydney and I are more like... What? Yeah. Or more like friends. <laughs> we want a more like a friend relationship. I don't have to get on her that much for anything, so... She don't yell. But she the knows, difference is, yeah. Sydney wants to do this. Sydney came to me about the modeling. I didn't go sign her up for anything. I didn't say, you know, this is what it is you're going to do. I said, are you sure this is what you want? She's, this, mom, this is my job. This is my life. I want to be a supermodel. I want to go to the top as far as I can take it. Now, if this is what she wants, I'm going to back her with doing it, but it's just, you're going to do it right. You're going to be on point. You know? Okay, but you say if she's going to be successful, she's got to do it right. She has to do it right. Okay, if you're going to be successful, you have to do it right. Exactly. Yeah, and you're I not agree. doing it right. I agree. I agree. You're not doing it I right. Agree. I mean, it's just that simple. All right, I agree. we're going to find out why is Linda pushing her daughter so hard, and is it for the wrong reasons? We'll be right back.
Now, Linda wants her daughter, Sydney, to win a future Miss USA beauty pageant. But Sydney wonders if this is more her mom's wish than hers. Do you listen to her when she says she doesn't want to be in the pageant process? She does, I mean, does that say, well, I've chosen the wrong thing. I need to look for something different. Well, you say that, but then if I say, okay, I'm going to pull out, you know, she'll say, okay, I'll just do it, you know. So it's like she kind of hem haws about it. I mean, if she really said, Mom, I don't want to do this, stop it, I would listen. But she doesn't want to disappoint you. Yeah, it's a different story. Um, I'll say <laughs> it's kind of built up anger when I say I don't want to do it anymore because of the process we went through. It's like constant yelling at each other, and I just got so mad and like I didn't want to do it. But then she would be like, well, this is a good opportunity for you. Why aren't you doing this? And she'll say, then I just won't do it. And then I feel like, like I don't know what to do. What would you like for her to do differently? Well, first off, um, she likes to sign me up for things without asking me, like a lot of things. Just, for example, the show. I'd have no idea about it until they, <laughs> <laughs> until they called me and they're like, hi, this is the producer from Dr. Phil. And I was like, what are you talking about? So things like if we could just if we could just have some more communication on these things, that okay. would be great. And so you'd like the opportunity to say no before your ticket's bought. Would you have said no to go be on Doctor? No, I don't want to meet you. Yeah, but for like the pageant, I was iffy about it. Like I'm not, I don't really think I'm pageant material, but I think that I just need more time to think about it. Like I don't, I'm gonna try it again, another pageant to see if I really want to do it, but. I mean, if I don't like it, that's it. And I don't want her to be, like, mad at me for me, like, giving it up. Okay, so you want to have the right to be involved, have more input to what you pursue in your life, and, and have the right to express your opinion without getting in trouble for it. Yeah. And that would make you happier. Yeah. Can you do that? Yes, but... <laughs> she, anyone that knows Sydney and I... Sydney treats me like her personal assistant. No, I don't. Yeah. She yeah. acts like my personal assistant. I can assistant. relate. She, no, she no, acts no, like it. You order me around. You <laughs> no, say, I don't. Yes, she does, honestly. Oh, I'm my God. Off. So I can do that, but she's, I don't know that, you, I think you, enjoy, like, enjoy it. You know, you want me to get, you want, you want me to do all the work and you take all the if reward. If we discuss it, but if you act like my personal assistant, I'm going to like it and I'm going to be like, hey, okay, I, well. Who are you? Sounds yeah. good to me. All right, well, I'm going to add somebody else to this conversation. When does a parent's competitiveness cross the line? Now, Louise says her 13-year-old daughter, Lexi, is a talented singer and actress with dreams of becoming a star. And she says she has no problem pushing her to the top. Take a look. Hi, Dr. Phil. I have a very talented 13-year-old daughter who aspires to be a singer. And an actress. Am I wrong to keep pushing her, knowing the hard work ahead of her? And am I wrong to want the world to see what I see on a daily basis? And then to push her in this industry? If it doesn't happen, what has it done to her psyche? Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll talk to them after the break. says her 13-year-old daughter Lexi could be the next Miley Cyrus and she's pushing for the world to hear her voice but at what cost now let's talk about this a little bit you actually sang from the stage here before we started the show yes and uh, she, uh, and I have to say I was backstage watching this and uh, the girl can sing. Can she sing or what? I, I thought you did a really nice job. Let's take a look at what Louise and Lexi did. Not just Lexi, but Louise. Do we have anybody out in the crowd with special talents? Do we have any talented people out here today? Huh? Do we have any singers, any dancers? Is there only one person with a talent in this entire audience? Does she want to do it? You're a singer? Come on up. Okay, so every opportunity, we're going to jump on every Absolutely, opportunity, right? Absolutely, positively, no doubt about it. Yeah. At every moment that she gets to show, case herself, um, if I don't do the pushing a little bit, then maybe she won't be at more apt to put herself out there. And the only way to make it in this business is letting somebody see you. And, and how do you know that? Um, just by experience. I What's mean, your experience? I don't, you that <laughs> I don't have 
the experience, but I do know. So you basically don't know. What no, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Curious. This is a quote from you. I cannot explain how much I want this for her. Right. Do you want this? I want this so bad. And what would, what's it for you? I want to become a known singer and songwriter, and I want, I want to be maybe in a TV show, or just I want to be known. It's my passion. It's what I do. It's I eat, sleep, breathe, everything, every single day. I want it. Uh huh. And she, she doesn't push. She pushes me for the right reasons, like, go raise your hand, go sing. Who knows who could be in this audience today? It doesn't, I go to show tapings and I sing and I get handed cards all the time. Uh -huh. And it's just, it's what I want. It's, it's what I do. God gave me this gift. That's who she is. Okay, so I let me. That. So, I just got to chill. Did say something? What did you just say? I said, I agree with you, Alexis. That's what I'm talking <laughs> So we're doing our job. <laughs> But come on, I have seen your work, and when someone is wasting your time or whatever, you're like straightforward, cut the crap. I'm not trying to hear it. Are you wasting my time? You can leave my show right now. And that's just the way we're going for it with our daughters. Well, I'm loving you more every minute. I'm, I'm I'm, seriously, now, no, what would you want to say? Well, I was just going to say, look. When she was two years old, this child was getting up on tables, taking brushes, and singing. And I'm like, where did she get this from? Every two-year-old. No, 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 no. They don't. They don't. It was a natural ability that God gave her. And so as she progressed and got older. No, seriously, all kids do that. Just it just so happens she can do it. The right. rest of them do it, but she can do right. it. I do hear things from you that suggest to me that this may be your passion. Whereas I hear from you, I don't want to be Miss USA. I don't want to be Miss Universe. I, I'm quitting. I'm burned out. Leave me alone. Shut up. I don't hear you saying those things. But this is the way I look at it. I will push her to the set. When she says, I'm done, I don't like this anymore, we're done. It's finished. This is what she wants. She pushes me sometimes more than I push her. This is a lot of work. But you're going to make damn sure she does it right. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Oh, you wouldn't say okay <laughs> if, she, if she said I'm quitting. I don't want to do this. But she you just, want to quit. You, this just is you would say you She'll would just say me. fine, okay, good. I would. I Let's would. go get a nice cream I, cone if, and do something else. Yes, I would. If yeah. she said I want to quit, Mom. you know what this is? This is the bolt flag. <laughs> we'll be right back. Well, if you're wondering if you might be going too far in pressuring your children to succeed in anything, whether it's grades, sports, singing, whatever, go to drphil.com. You can click on Be in the Show and tell us your story. And understand, I get it. We have to encourage our children. We have to motivate them. We have to ask them to rise to their best level. But sometimes it has to do with methodology and it has to do with boundaries. Special thanks to supermodel Beverly Johnson. Thank you for waiting around. And uh, can, can I have the three young ladies up here that we were talking about? Y'all come up for just a second. Walk right over here. Walk. Seriously, are these not just beautiful, delightful young women? I mean, really, just absolutely. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. So long. Thanks, guys. On an all-new Dr. Phil. Would you want to know the photographs? What your husband's mistress looks like. In this envelope is the pictures of the hoe that my husband slept with. Let's take a look. Oh my oh, god. god. Then I want to confront both of you. Oh you bitch! You're out of order. I don't care what you say. Alana takes but on Dr. Phil. Are you telling me that you're too good to be helped? And the face-off that's been building from day one. I want you to look at each other. Don't say anything. Eye contact. 
What the hell? I don't want to look at her. Look her in the eye. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. It matters to you. That's what I want to talk about. Are you ready to move? Take Let's do it. Today, things get heated between the Dr. Phil housewives, and Jennifer sees the mysterious woman her husband had an affair with. But first, I recently had a special sit-down with the women when I heard Alana was doing a celebrity catwalk charity event benefiting National Animal Rescue, a cause that's very close to my heart. I wanted it to be a fun night out for all the housewives, but Alana's reaction wasn't quite what I was expecting. You're getting ready to model. Yeah. <laughs> and a charity event. Yes. And what's the charity? It's called Celebrity Catwalk. It's raising money to rescue animals. Well, I have a foundation, a Dr. Phil Foundation, so we'll donate $10,000. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, what's for the I'd like to invite all of you to go in support of her. Yes. All except one. You just can't come, Gloria. You're she's, unpredictable. Well, she's not going to embarrass you. That's Please. okay. I decline. It's fine. Please. No, she's not going to embarrass you. So you don't want her there? Don't want her there. Don't even want to hear her name. Today, things are going to get intense with Alana, but stay tuned because I truly believe what happens today will change her life. Here's what you need to know for today. Previously on the Dr. Phil Housewives. How many years were you married? 16. How long has it been since he came to you and wanted to have sex with you before you caught him cheating? We stopped having sex. Six days after we're married. Do you think you overreact? No, I think I actually underreact. <laughs> I will drop you like a bad habit. Get Nobody better put a muzzle on her before I put my foot. Go for it. Get her a spray jack. Michelle is Gloria's cheerleader. Ride your ass, sit down, and shut the hell up. What you I put out you. there is up. what you're going to get right. back. Respect. I'm so but I'm not scared of you, Respect. and I'm sick to death of you. Okay. I'm not interested in this exchange. Nor am I. But you engage in it. That's why I shut up, Dr. Phil, so I don't have to f engage in it. Can we roll our sleeves up here? What's your position on this fashion show thing? My position on the fashion show still stands. Gloria's not invited. No way, no how. So, how do the rest of y'all feel about that? I think it's, it's not, it's mean. <laughs> Why do you do that? I, I want to, con I honestly, at this point, want to confront both of you. No, don't even start, because you've been looking at me all day today crazy. Okay, I haven't said anything. No, Why your behavior, too, is out of order. In life, you're going to have to deal with other people's you having right. opinions. I don't have to. Okay, then good luck in the real world. No, I'm doing fine in the real world. What about you, Miss Lonely? I am doing fine. Good luck in the real world okay. to you, too. The anger towards Michelle was really genuine. Like, it's been built up so long. Well, you can't handle the real world. I'm like, girl, you barely can handle it. That's why you're lonely and in the house all damn day. Both of you guys aren't nice. And you're not either. You, you sit there and mad dogging people all day. I'm, I'm upset. What type of person does that? Say something. Don't stare at me. You guys Be treat the producers like crap. Oh, you Bitch, you're out of order. I seen your today. You bought you guys don't around. treat people at all. Oh, at all. Go I don't care yourself. what you <laughs> I don't give a I'm thing. speechless. See, they bring it out of me. I'm good. She's crazy. She totally, she, she was so okay, I'm crazy. Taylor. You are Michelle. She's full of. Okay, because before we even went in there, she was, Oh, I'm so emotional. I feel like I'm gonna be crying and everything. So she already had that mindset anyway, but. I've seen her pick fights with Rachel, so Michelle's no angel. I mean, Dr. Phil seems to think she's the greatest thing since sliced bread, but this chick, she's she knows how to manipulate people. You guys aren't nice. Let me interject I haven't even, like, said anything to you. Stop talking about, stop talking to me. I have no problem, I have no problem not talking to you. I actually cried. I was really upset that Alana told me to off again for, I don't know what, the fourth time on the show. The low blows that she says that I'm lonely and um, has to cut at me. And in a way, even though it's a horrible thing, she's actually teaching me to stick up for myself a little bit more. 
the reaction that you're having, the intensity of the reaction you're having is so disproportionate to what's going on in the room and in the group, I'm really wondering what it's about. I'm it's not about Gloria. It's not about Michelle. Oh, it's, now it, it's me, yeah. yeah. Let me tell you something. I know what I'm doing. And if you want to have a debate with me, just belly up, darling, because you are not going to win. I'm not trying to bully you. You just jumped up and lurched across the room like you were going to whoop somebody's ass. And what about ass. her outbreaks, Dr. Phil? Come on now. You have favorites, so... My outburst is I'm almost crying. We're not talking about you. Shut the hell up. Now, you're talking to me, and you are being disproportionate, and you are being rude, and it doesn't have anything to do with these people. It is inappropriate, and it is wrong. So what's going on? I think she's just like... I didn't ask you a oh. question. I'm asking you a question. Now, for you guys to pick and single out me... That pisses me off. I'm not singling you out. That's how I, I am feel. selecting you to talk to because you need attention. I don't need attention. Are you telling me that I have been unkind or unfair with you? I feel like you're singling me out. Just a couple weeks ago, she goes off cussing at you. But you're like, I'm sitting here feeling miserable. What's the f***ing payoff? Well, you not... tell me. Okay. Can you please refrain from cussing at him, really? This oh, is shut the, the f up. up. But then I get a chance to show my emotion or express how I feel to her. So now I'm just wrong. No, I'm just fed up, to be honest. Do you think your behavior is appropriate? I feel like a lot of weight was lifted off my shoulders. Are you proud when you yell at somebody and jump up and, and I'm not proud. tell them to go f themselves? It's just a reaction I had because dealing with them all day, I'm tired of it. You'll vent at her if she talks. You'll vent at her if she talks. You'll vent at her if she talks. You, you, you vented at me last week. I mean, what did I do to you last week? No, I didn't. Let's, let's take a look at what you said. I was pissed off when Dr. Phil opened up the invitation to invite everyone. Just because you donate don't mean you're going to make me party with people I don't want to party with. I was pissed off. I didn't like the fact that Dr. Phil invited Gloria. No. I buy a table at the event for a group of women that I work with and care very much about. And you tell me that's wrong. I'm not even talking about the donation. That's for the animals. Now, you're going to tell me what to do? I'm not telling you what to do. You didn't give me a chance. I said why I didn't want her there. Okay, tell us why. Because she's unpredictable. You're very unpredictable. No, I'm not. I'm supporting you and your charity. I wouldn't and you do just anything. jumped up and offered to whip somebody. I wouldn't ass. do anything to disrespect you. Gloria is not the issue here. She doesn't even care to go. Why Michelle would she want to hang with not... someone that she doesn't even care for? Why would you hang with someone that you don't care for? I don't get that. Let, let, let's just be honest about this. I, I'm trying to help you with an issue that you have that has to do with anger and rage and impulse control. Oh, now I need anger management. No, I I didn't say it. no you don't need anger management. Okay. Are you telling me that you're too good to be helped? Is, is that your suggestion that... Oh, I don't need that. Oh, now I need help. Are you telling me that you're that you're above that? That that you, you, I, I'm just not at a level that I can offer you something that would be worthy of consideration. A sign of helping to, sometimes means that you're weak. I I guess yeah. Gloria is not the issue. Michelle is not the issue. They have a problem with me. I got a problem with them. You know, I've said that what happens in this room is a mirror to what happens outside this room. Well, I don't act like that in the public. I'll well, that. that's interesting because there's a guy that works at the water tower on the Paramount lot by the name of Aaron. Uh -huh. And he told me that in the eight years he's worked there, he has <laughs> never been talked to as rudely as he was talked to by you. He doesn't even know what he was talking about. You sure he didn't get me confused with another black girl in the parking lot? No, Ivana. I'm I just sorry. asked for you, a you, No, you were very rude to all of this. You were. I'm sorry. You know I'm your friend, but you really were. I saw Alana being rude today during lunch, and um, she was barking orders. I want this, and I want this now. She was just awful, and the sad thing is, Rachel started cupping her. 
And so she started barking off orders as well. They weren't showing any class at all. You think I'm making that up? I, I Who's told you. Aaron? He Your works at. He no, works he's the guy that that brought the food out. He no. introduced himself to all of us. No, whatever. Well, you can't just whatever. You say no, it's not. And then I give you a specific example with a time, a place, and a person. Now that's a fact. Coming up. Because you guys are so mean, it's shocking How are we to me. Mean if we don't talk to you. Because you're the loudest. Okay, you're... but don't roll and give us dirty looks all day. If we're quiet, we're it's leaving so you funny. alone. I, I give you dirty looks. Well, all I don't day. even waste my time looking at you. And later, Jennifer finally sees her husband's mistress. on an all-new Dr. Phil. I don't want my family to be hurt because I'm trying to be who I am. I want to be a woman. His whole life was a lie. No, when to be with a woman. I want to be with a man. Did you or know that he had these feelings before you married him? Yes. And you married him anyway? Now. If you did have this sex change operation. He wouldn't ever get a sex change. The truth comes out. There's more to this than Natalie even realizes. All-new Dr. Phil. That's tomorrow. Turn to the Dr. Phil Housewives Get Real Tuesday. There's a guy that works at the water tower on the Paramount lot by the name of Aaron, and he told me that in the eight years he's worked there, he has never been talked to as rudely as he was talked to by you. I ordered a lunch. I want it the way I ordered it. And then I'm a problem because you own a restaurant or a little sandwich shop and you don't know how to complete orders? Come on now. Don't go into the business of serving if you can't provide customer service. Now, Aaron's worked there for eight years. He's never dealt with a customer like me. I go through there. Tom Cruise goes through there. Chevy Chase goes through there. We all go through there. He said you are the rudest person he's talked to in Well, well you guys really are just blown this out of proportion to some person that I am really not. I mean, gosh, <laughs> who would have known? <laughs> you, you can be dismissive of it, and you can hide behind humor, and you can deflect. But the point I'm trying to make is I, I don't want you to do that. Did you ever read Self Matters? I listened to the audio. Once I start healing, I didn't need to read it anymore. Okay, <laughs> I know. Well, listen to me. One of the things I said in there is that the more you know, accept, and are at peace with who you are, the less vulnerable you are to what others say and do about you. If you're very fragile, and you don't know who you are, and a clerk in a store or in a cafe is rude to you, it can just become World War III. How dare they talk to me that way? And just blow up and all of this and be mad about it later. I just won't talk to nobody. How about that? What? Leave me alone. Really? Get a backbone, whoever doesn't have the backbone. I haven't said anything to disrespect them. I don't believe that Alana's behavior um, in this circle is any different from any other circle in life that she deals with. I think she's actually used to probably creating maybe a world around her where people do not actually challenge her personality or things that she does. We're talking about you now. You said, what does she even care? What she cares about is, I was embarrassed for her at what you said and did. It was unkind and it is beneath you. You are better than that. And I promise you, when people look at this, they will not think badly of you. They will think badly of you. She talks about this bad energy, how I make her sick in the stomach. Energetically, there's certain people whose energy vibrates differently than I on a more negative level. Their energy affects me to where I actually feel physically ill. Why would you want to be around? You make me sick in the stomach. I'm not going. I'm not going to make myself sick. That's just a night I live for once here. No. We're here, yeah, for a purpose. But as far as when we leave here, don't want to see her, don't want to deal with her. That's not and what she said. And why can't you guys again, respect that about me? I don't want you to weigh me. in yet. I'm going to answer that. That is not what she did, what you mocked just now. What she said is, it is okay. I respectfully decline. Have a nice time. That's what she said. I have it on tape. No, we're saying prior to that, she said, my energy, I make her sick in the stomach. So why would I bring that around? Did you or did you not say that? I make you sick in the stomach, right? Uh, quite some time ago. Mm. I actually made efforts with you since then. 
I, I attached you and gave you a love hug at the sleepover. You did? I think you was too busy running around. I have that tape. Let's 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 take a look at what happened at that sleepover. Let's let's take a look at this. I want to talk about it. I'm gonna give you so much love. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. I'm gonna give you so much love. <laughs> The clock is ticking starting now. Five minutes. Divide up your team. Okay. 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 I got too much going for myself to even waste my time trying to let trust someone a third time. Really? For what? Gloria, when this is done, I'm not going to try the it issue. here. Okay, what's the issue? She is the freaking issue. <laughs> I'm sorry, she's the issue. No, I thought I thought Michelle was the issue. Well, she uh, she is too. Both of them. You just jumped up and said "f you" to me on national television. So what? I just Listen. don't see how you feel okay with being a type of person. I don't like you, so what? That's unbecoming to you. Well, how do you feel it's okay just, saying what you say? Yeah, I haven't you know, said anything. Know, what have I said? How, how you came Michelle, out Michelle, like you, you stayed here all day rolling person. your eyes at people. I'm, I want to hear what Rachel has to say, please. Thank you. Well, I was just saying, I mean, how do you feel when you come out and say, you know, you're such a mean person when you have no backing to say that? When I actually have I've, not I've even thought, spoke to you. I was trying to talk before I got cussed out by you. Um, I've been feeling, like, really negative. Like, you guys have been, you know, giving me negative vibes and looks since the last show. I'm not imagining that. You know Just that like it's you there. It's uncomfortable like between us. You. Am I right? Yeah. Have you Just, counted how many times you rolled your eyes at us? You sit when, there and give us dirty looks I, I, all day, Michelle. Okay, if you ask most people in life, I'm not that type of person. So when did I roll my eyes at you? You did it a couple of times. I said, she look at me one more time, roll because her eyes, say something. you guys are something. so mean. It's shocking How are we mean? We don't talk to you. Because you're the loudest. To ignore you is the best thing. That is fine with me because, Okay, you but know don't what? roll and give us dirty looks all day. If we're quiet, we're it's leaving so you funny. alone. I, I give you dirty looks Girl, all day. I don't day. even waste my time looking at you. That's how... It is. Who it's like, is the who is the, uh, uh, the angry person here? You, Every time we you walk in this room, and I, we're both angry. I'm not angry. Okay, well then why I just are you don't so like I don't like being around. It's hard for me to be around people, and it's hard for me to be around that you are too. always screaming and angry at others. What do you I mean? You like keep that. saying people, like everyone's just yelling <laughs> okay, at you all the time. Hold on. Hold on. Not at me. They're not yelling at me. Just other people. It breath. bothers me. Time out. There's not anybody in this room that I believe has a toxic personality. They don't really get under my skin, to be honest with you. When I leave here, they have no power on my life. When I leave here, who's, what? Gloria Michelle, who's that? Don't even know. Um, it's just, when we get here, it's just like, oh my God, here we go again. Make no mistake, everybody here has diva moments. No, uh, we're women, what do you expect? <laughs> no, seriously. That's true, it's not just you. You don't have a, you, you don't have a, a corner on that but you have to own it when you do okay I'll own it but I mean I don't know oh, well I got a question for you coming up you're gonna attack her are you kidding me I've been holding back that's why I just hit the, like it just I exploded I but she isn't on. your issue Return to the Dr. Phil Housewives Get Real Tuesday. Oh, well, I got a question for you. Okay. Why are you hurting so bad? Not hurting. Why are you so afraid, or what has you so frustrated? It's frustrating right now for me. Okay. That's it, then, frustration. Then that's and, and that's what I'm asking myself because I want to help you with that. What I need is to start living my life doing something that I'm passionate about. That's what I want. I'm. <laughs> running myself crazy right now. Yeah, I'm going through a divorce, but I'm also trying to hold out a mortgage, you know, expenses, living the lifestyle I'm a common, you know, accustomed to. I mean, I'm working like three jobs. I just want to be passionate and like, I want to wake up and do something that I'm really passionate about. And it seems like I'm working myself so hard to get there. And it's like, when will this come or when will it all pay off? Because I can't keep doing this to myself anymore. I can't just keep waking up doing things just to... 
Ah, there it is. I'm frustrated. There. <laughs> I'm just frustrated. So you feel I'm like so you're tough spinning myself. your wheels going I'm, through the motions. I work too hard to not have the things that I want in life. I'm just frustrated. I'm not angry. But then that's the next thing to do. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. How do you, you ask you for a passion? I can't say, oh, doctor, give me some passion. Oh, but you can. No. <laughs> but you can. And let me tell you, I, I would... I would have preferred to have spent the last hour talking about identifying and creating an action plan to help you find that passion and recruiting all of these people to be in your balcony cheering you on than I would trying to defuse all of this anger that you keep showing. I I've been thinking about this. Take a look at this and I want to talk about it. Okay. Make no mistake, she is specifically here for a reason about you. I there are no that. accidents. There, I'm telling you, there are no accidents. You two are supposed to be here. It's no accident you're sitting next to each other. It's no accident that you're both here. I actually, I totally see how we're alike. I, I don't relate on where she's at right now, but clearly we're both assertive, powerful we gotta be women, strong. and we're strong. We have to be that way. And sometimes to a fault. And I, I definitely see the similarities. Am I right or wrong? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. If you don't have arrogance, you can't recognize arrogance. If you don't have an anger, you can't recognize it in others. We don't have the filter to see something unless we have a basis for it within ourselves. The person that you think, oh no, that's who I don't want to talk to, that's who you need to talk to the most. And invariably, people will create value with those that intimidate them, annoy them the most. Your psychological skin is burned. And if anybody even brushes up against you, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm at my breaking point. You do. I mean, you look like Godzilla. <laughs> Seriously, Bridezilla. standing up, swatting at airplanes. You think you're going to attack her? Oh. You're going to attack her? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I've been holding back. That's why. I just hit. The, like, it just, I exploded. I but was just she a time isn't bomb. your issue. I'm telling you, it comes from the inside it's out. It's me, it's me, okay, it's me. How much we trust others? So I've trust her, she's burned me. I've trust her, she's burned me. So I've trust her, she's burned me. How much we trust others is directly proportionate to how much we trust ourselves and our ability to handle their imperfections. The thing is, I don't even know where to start with her. We've been to like, honestly, we basically hit rock bottom. The way we talk to each other, how do you go back to, I just don't know where to start with her. I think if I'm cool with her, then Michelle would be cool with me. But you know, it shouldn't be that way, but that's how I feel. I don't really know how to start with Gloria. That deep down in our guts, we actually have a lot of the same pain and frustration and issues. Yeah, I guess. I don't see that, but I don't know. I don't know where to start. Do you trust me? I trust you so far with my life and my, my brain, so. <laughs> then I, I want you to do something for me right now. <laughs> I knew it. What? What I want you to do uh -huh. is stand up. Stand up. Gloria, stand up. Coming up. I want you to look at each other. Don't say anything. I Don't say a word. Eye contact. I can't look at her face. Please, look at her. Trust me. You said you trusted her. We now return to the Dr. Phil Housewives Get Real Tuesday. Okay, sit down. You first. When Dr. Phil asked me to sit down face to face with Gloria, I was like, oh, crap. Got to work on my uppercut, my one-two punch, my combo. Because I'm like, Lord, what is this man thinking? I want you to look at each other. Don't say anything. Don't say a word. Say. Eye contact. I can't look at her face. Please, look at her. Oh, Trust me. You said you trusted me. Don't say a word. Look at her. I can't. Come on. Stare me up. 
Look her in the eye. Don't look away. Don't look away. I can't. What the hell? I don't want to look at her. Look at her. <laughs> you said you trusted me. Trust me I now. I do, but why am I going to look at her? She's crying. I'm crying. We just a hot mess now. Look her in the eye. The first thing I did when I looked at her right now, I'm like, oh my God. Look her in the eye. So mean to you. But when I look at your eyes right now, because I've never looked into your soul, you're hurting. <sighs> but I don't understand why you've been so mean to me. Like, just, we've been so harsh to I each know. other. I don't want that. I don't want that anymore. I don't want it either, but it's just like, I don't understand. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. How, I can't tell you. I think we're triggering things in each other, and I think that if we can work past that, that's going to help us both a lot in our lives. I don't even know what went wrong with us. Just look I don't really know either. Shh, 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 shh. Just look at each other. Lori, it should be obvious to you that you have hurt her. You have cut her deeply at times because she just said, I don't know why you're so mean to me. Mm -hmm. I want sorry. you to apologize to her from your heart, not your head, from your heart. I am sorry. I'm sorry to contribute to any of your pain. I am sorry. Tell her, tell her what you're thinking. I, I don't know what to say. Tell her you're sorry for what you've done to her. I, I'm sorry. I apologize for what I've done to you. Although, you know, when I did make my comments to you, I didn't really know how, I guess it got under your skin really bad, like where it burned you. And I apologize. <sighs> Honestly, today in this session, Alana changed, but I don't see her permanently changing. I mean, I have hope for everyone that everyone can change, but I've seen her do this before. I've seen her get sad and say to me, I want to be your friend, Michelle, and hug me. And then I've seen her in the next second tell me to off again. Tell her I can be better and I will be better. I can be better and I will be better. I, I'm a good person. I really am. I know tell, that. Tell her you can be better and you will be better. I can be better and I will be better. I know you're a good person. <laughs> that little kumbaya moment that was there today, I don't believe that's sincere or going to last. If it does, I'll be very surprised. There's too much bad blood there and they are oil and water. Thank you. God bless you. And then I want to talk to you about that envelope. I had requested the services of a private investigator so that I could get some pictures uh, to see the woman that my husband had the affair with. It's something that I won't be able to get past until I see her. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm anxious. I'm, I'm excited to see this. It's, it'll be out of my mind once and for all, and I'll be able to move on. The photographs and everything else you asked for is in that envelope. Okay? Thanks so much, Jennifer, and best of luck to you. Coming up. In this envelope is the pictures of the hoe that my husband slept with. Let's take a look. to the Dr. Phil Housewives Get Real Tuesday. Tell me what's in that envelope. In this envelope is the pictures of the hoe that my husband slept with. You were ready to look at those pictures? I have to. When I actually had that envelope in my hands, it made me so sick. I just, I just, I just wanted to fall through the floor. I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. Let's take a look. Oh, damn. Ooh. Huh? What? Oh, pass my God. God. You got to pass it around. Come on. <laughs> let me see. Oh. This is the woman he said I love you to. Oh, this is the woman Enrique. that he took over me. <laughs> what, what the hell Are is you kidding that? me? This is a joke. That's it's a, a joke. joke. Thank God she's This is a goddess. joke. You're no. a goddess. When I saw Jennifer's reaction when she saw the picture, damn. I'm like, ooh, yes. His mistress was a hot mess. 
I feel so much better. We can't oh show the picture, yeah. so you need to describe it for us. Oh, okay. Wow. This little <laughs> bitch. This bitch had the tenacity to talk to me the way she did, oh. looking like this. This is what my husband did in the back of the car. So how did he describe her? He said that she had some blonde in her hair. She t he told me she had a flat ass, bird legs, and not very bright. So you feel like he went slumming here? Oh, honey, he went to the bottom of the barrel. Okay, this woman is trash. What's your gut level reaction? You don't know how the, much better this makes me feel. So this was a good thing? This was an amazing thing. He jeopardized his family, his wife, his career. He jeopardized everything. And so does this give you an opportunity to move on? I have so moved on. I keep getting this mental picture in my head <laughs> of Jennifer driving, you know, somewhere, like to a grocery store in her car, and she's happy that she, the lady looks like death cooked over. She's happy that this lady is disgusting. And then I just see Jennifer, like, breaking down. I think she's going to get angry. Does that worry you when you hear that kind of story, 16 years it came to this end? <laughs> and you want, and you want a husband. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's Wow. That terrifies me. I can't imagine what you went through. That, that must be tough. Well, it's a lot easier now. I'm telling you this right now because that's why I'm really so I just found some free stuff that was willing to give it up. Getting into these relationships, I, I do want you to be picky. I, I do. Because I'll, I'll tell you what, somebody needs to earn the right to be in your life, to be in mm -hmm. your life, to be in your life. They need to step up and earn the right. How do you know that person is not going to wrong you or cheat on you or do that? If you hook up with a hound dog and hasn't succeeded in relationships and has cheated, the best predictor is that's exactly what they're going to do with you. You want to flush these boys out early. And they may not qualify for being him right away, but they can be disqualified from being him right away. Do you feel comfortable dating right now? Yes and no. I'm, I'm... What's the no part? How does somebody really get to know me without knowing who my children are? But how dare I expose my children to somebody that isn't going to be around forever? So it's, I just can't see another man meeting my children and leaving. And you certainly don't want somebody bonding with your children before they've made a commitment to you. Are you ready to do this? Are you ready to, to get in a relationship? I've sat home alone enough. But you're ready to do it. I don't know if I'm ready. I'm not, like, excited. Like, yes, I can't wait to do it every night. I'm going to fill my whole planner. But I'm going to try. My advice to Gloria and Michelle is let your hair down. Take a risk. Men are like bus stops. There's one in every corner. Hell, Michelle got a nice car. She should take that little Mercedes, drive to every damn bus stop. Like, I'll take you, I'll take you, and take you. And don't feel bad at all. You just got to throw yourself into it and say, you know what? If I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it well. Coming up. I'm still on edge about Gloria coming to the charity event, but I think time will heal. The event's coming up pretty soon, so we'll just have to see what happens. This is an event that is going to be fun for everybody, and everybody was invited. And to be excluded from anything, it's, you know, it's like when you're back in sixth grade and you're not invited to the slumber party. It hurts. Now return to the Dr. Bill Housewives Get Real Tuesday. After a struggle with myself, my family, and my friends, I decided to invite Gloria to the Celebrity Catwalk. Have not told Gloria yet. She still doesn't have a dress. But hey, payback's a bitch. We're off to a new beginning, and I would love to start it off fresh. I accept with pleasure, and I will be one of your biggest fans. Uh, this is what we got for today. We're going to go and surprise Jennifer, because you know we got to get her diva fight out for the event tonight. Okay, Jennifer, I want you to look your best, so I brought you to the best. White House, black market. Trust me, you're in good hands. I think that's a stretch. She should just try them all on. How about these slots? They're gorgeous. No pants, Jennifer. <laughs> no pants allowed. I gotta go. I gotta get ready for my show. I gotta get deep inside myself. But um, I know I'm leaving you in good hands. Bye, girl. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Let's get rolling. I want to see you in them. Oh, my God! Oh, oh yes. I hate it. Oh, my God. Wow. No. I appreciate all the help you guys have given me. I like what you picked out. But um, I'm going to look around a little more on my own, and you'll see me when ever you see me with whatever I have on. So you're going to surprise us now? I'm going to surprise you. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I may be in pants. Who knows? No! Go away. Shoo shoo. No! <laughs> Thank you for all your help. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? My name's David John. Welcome to Serge Dermont at John Frieda. I'm excited. <laughs> You have nice hair. We should maybe warm up your color. Welcome. Welcome. Come on in. 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 Come on I'm tired of feeling like the old grumpy one up there, you know? They got these sparkly, gorgeous women, and I just want to feel like one of them for one night. Ladies! Never again, this is a one-time thing. Oh, honey, this has been an oh effort. God, <laughs> you look like you feel good. Let's go have some fun. <laughs> Jennifer, we're here at Hollywood Celebrity Hangout Boulevard 3. We're so excited that Alana is going to be hitting the catwalk for charity. At first, Glory was excluded, and, um... I understood Alana's feelings, why she did it, but I didn't understand how she did it. It was very rude and mean, and I didn't like that. So I'm glad that they've worked it out. We're here to support her, and it's really important that we do that because we kind of are the healthies. Jennifer, you look so good tonight. I mean, almost better than myself. more trust issues than I do, which is like close to impossible. And I really believe up until the very last second that Alana wasn't sure that I was going to support her. And I saw her and it was just genuine from my soul, like, Alana! You know what? I, I'm feeling like different now. I'm feeling like snazzy. I'm gonna go up to men and be like, hey, you're cute. It's been a really long time since I've seriously been around like a grabbed a man. I can't believe I grabbed his body at a random fashion show. <laughs> Jennifer has come so far in her transformation, you know, and the confidence is what she needs. And once she has the confidence, I think it's going to help her decide if she wants to stay in the marriage or not. I mean, if she's this confident, I know she's looking around and she's appreciating hot men now. It's a first for her. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with being married and appreciating a man. Dr. Phil, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. This night wouldn't have happened without you, your gracious donation. From the bottom of my heart, Dr. Phil, I just want to thank you. And uh, it feels good to know that someone loves and supports you. It feels good. Next Monday and Tuesday. You complain if you get help. You complain if you don't. An explosive two-part Dr. Phil Housewives. You're going to help me get a job. It's not my job to get you a job. I don't owe you a damn thing, girl. And what really happened at the fashion show. You were offered drugs. Yes. And you both turned it down? I turned it down. That wasn't a question. I don't ask for anybody else. Of course I don't do drugs. Have you been drinking today? No, I did drink last night. Because the makeup artist smelled alcohol on you this morning. Leads to the most intense episode yet. Yeah, ambulance right now. The best drama in daytime is on Dr. Phil. Next Monday and Tuesday.
Well, I am so happy the women were able to have a great time and that the Dr. Phil Foundation was able to donate and take part in such a great cause. Then next week, the drama hits an all-time high. Coming up, Michelle met with professional dating coach Nancy Miller and Cupid's coach CEO Julie Furman for some dating etiquette. Don't forget our housewives have joined the Dr. Phil community and Facebook. So make sure you go to drphil.com and read their personal blogs or check out their status on Facebook and click on the link to like them. Thanks. So long. Well, should we handle that love life of yours? So, what are appropriate things to really share about yourself, like on a first date? Well, what are some of the things that you feel um, hesitant about? You know, my last relationship, or um, you know, dating, or um, my career. Well, what do you do? I have a small business, and I'm starting a new company. I'm a workaholic. You know, I was engaged to someone a year and a half ago. First date conversation. Keep it all positive and then okay. shift it right back. So I'd love to know more about your work. Do you let a guy kiss you on a first date or have, you know, touch you or hold your hand? Definitely don't sleep with him. Is there any telltale warning signs that you know a guy's a commitment phobe or a liar? If they won't answer a question directly. Yeah. You know, they keep looking at their watch. But isn't it true that most men, like, they don't want to be married? So you're going to, like, trick them? We've been responsible for over 1,145 marriages. Where are these men? On an island somewhere really far away? <laughs> we know more men than you could possibly yeah, exactly. imagine. She's so excited. I'd say Michelle has a ways to go, um, but she's willing to take the journey into learning how to date more successfully. Today on Dr. Phil. She ran away from suburbs to slums. Lonnie, come out here. It's your dad. I need to talk to you. You can't make me leave. I'm done. Their daughter needs help. She was arrested for heroin. Did you bail her out? Yes. But so do the parents. You guys aren't ready. You're hiding stuff from your husband. She's I not did. hiding anything from me. Well, she told us that she did, so she's either lying to us or she's lying to you. Now, Lonnie finally made it here. The intervention. I'm a heroin addict. I can say it. Are you an addict? No, I'm not. You are a liar, Mom. Lonnie, your mom is not a drug addict. Were you addicted to painkillers? She doesn't want the world to know. Say it. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've heard long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Both of you. Take I'm going to get you the help that you need. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. I'm pulling into the street where she's staying. I turn the light off. It's actually not even on the GPS. Hey, Lonnie. There's my daughter. I can feel. I'm opening any door in the world for you. I'm not going anywhere today. I'm telling you that right now. Well, that was Brandon once again trying to save another addict's life. Can you believe that 10 years ago, right here on this stage, we made television history with the first ever on-air drug intervention on Brandon. Did you lie to me to get him in here? Answer my question. You are the biggest liar in the group. You lie to your father, you lie to your mother. That's the pot calling the kettle black, my friend. Brandon, I know you want Don't help. Don't talk to me. Am I done? Can I go now? He walked down this runway with a big choice to make. Now he's going to walk back up it today. Let's welcome Brandon. Well, Brandon is now seven years sober and has been paying it forward ever since. He partnered with his mother, Debbie, and together they have performed hundreds of interventions all across the nation. Take a look at some of their toughest cases. Oh my gosh, what the f Why do you think we're here? Tell me. We're all gonna run in there behind her. HAL, hold, hold on, hold on. You're not leaving, jail. We went in, attempted to intervene on jail, and she went into a full blown meth psychosis rage. You don't even know me. No, I don't know. So then how are you gonna sit here and tell me I'm out of my mind? Because I've been where you're at. I don't care about your life and your sad, soft story. I don't even want you here. Get off of me! Call 911. Say hello to Debbie and Brandon. They are here. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
So, how you doing? Catch us up. Oh, I'm doing fantastic. I never, ever imagined life could be so good. And uh, actually, when I say that you guys are paying it forward, you guys have been doing interventions. You've been helping us with interventions. Uh, and when Debbie called us about this next story, she said the family desperately needed our help. In just three years, 20-year-old Lonnie had gone from a straight-A student to getting kicked out of high school for trading pills and later selling heroin to an undercover cop. This family was on the brink of giving up hope. Take a look. My daughter Lonnie, she's 20 years old. She's addicted to heroin. Left the house a few weeks ago. We haven't seen her since. Lonnie was a great kid. She always loved to be around family. When she was in eighth grade, her grandfather died. They were very, very close. That was the major turning point. She was more withdrawn and began experimenting with drugs. When she was a sophomore, she was expelled for having narcotics on her. She had Norcos, which she took from grandma. In 12th grade, she was high all the time. I would talk to her. She was a good liar. I'm not high. I'm not doing anything. I found out later that she was taking ecstasy. I suspected Lonnie doing drugs about two and a half years ago. She met this boy. The second I saw this guy, I knew it was bad news. When she was 18, she moved out. Last year, she was arrested two times for possession. One of those, she sold to an undercover cop. Then she moved back home. It continued to get worse. We would find cut up straws, squares of foil that were very dirty and ashy, and a lot of dark fingerprints on the wall. We've found it in her clothes, under her bed. I'm talking hundreds of pieces of foil. I have another daughter, Lindsay. She's a perfect kid. My sister is toxic. The amount of stress and the feeling of anxiety all the time. I'm mortified to be your sister. I thought about coming home one day and she died. It's like a really scary feeling, but I don't care. I've always felt in the bottom of my heart, there's no hope for this girl. About three weeks ago, Paul had hundreds of dollars missing out of his bank account. We confronted her, and of course, it's always deny, deny. She went to live with Grandma. There were several times when I found that there were bills missing from my wallet. There were a couple of old gold necklaces that were missing. So we confronted her. She denied it. Her boyfriend came and picked her up. She hugged me and said, I love you, Mom. Don't worry, I'm fine. That was the last time we saw her. Jail doesn't scare her. Death doesn't scare her. I'm numb. I don't even want to look at her. She doesn't want to get clean. She likes heroin. How, how is it that you have a daughter that is a heroin addict, two felonies pending, uh, hanging out with druggies? How, how did we get in this situation? I just think it started from school, hanging in the, the environment that she was hanging out with. She wanted to be on the outside and uh, just be around terrible environment. <clears throat> Kids that had no, no direction, no goals. But why? I don't know. She has a very low self-esteem. Why? I don't know. I don't know if she was. I have no idea. We've always told her how beautiful okay, she was. Let me, let me, let me stop you all here for a minute. This is important to me. Have no, you not I given know. any thought to this? Oh, of course. Because I'm asking, you're going like, well, like I, it never occurred to me that somebody's going to ask me how we got no. to this point. I need you to come full present here right now. I don't mess around. If she right. wants to be a drug addict, I am her worst damn nightmare. Because let me tell you, I will haunt her ass till the end of the world. Okay? You have no idea. And I, I ask you a question, and you're just kind of staring off like you're in well, shock. I, I listen to what you say, and you say, I'm done. I'm through with her. And if that's true... Not, it's not true. I mean, I'll do anything for her. Then why daughter. did you say that? If you're not in this deal, then you need to excuse yourself. Because I'm getting ready to deal with your daughter, 
and I can't have anybody dragging their feet or anybody that's not committed to it. I have a philosophy, and you need to adopt it and embrace it, and it is this. You never, ever surrender to the disease. There were half a dozen times that I personally could have given up on him, a hundred times that Doug and Debbie could have given up on Brandon, but they didn't. I've interviewed him on this stage. I've interviewed him in an orange jumpsuit in the Harris County Jail, and his mother was driving around not knowing she had black tar heroin hidden in her car because he had left it in the console. Okay? We, th th you didn't invent this problem, but you, you have it. So there has to be a sense of urgency here. I may never see her other than today. And, and you've got these two here. He's lived it. He's been there. She's a psychiatric nurse, a drug specialist. You have the A-team here. Right. So let me ask you again, why is she this way? So let me ask you again, why is she this way? I think this has been a lifelong coming issue. She was, as a child, she was unhappy, uh, never felt good about herself. What did you do about that? Oh, I took her to psychiatrists, what therapists. What did they do about it? I had her evaluated. They were never able to peel back anything significant to get her to change or realize that what, she's you, a beautiful person. Add? A lot of her problems are, you know, it's hereditary. I mean, I, I grew up where my brother committed suicide when he was 18 years, when he was 18 years old. Yeah, I'm very sorry for your loss about that. Thank you, but thank you. Our family has multi-generational mental problems. I really feel that Paul has never dealt with this death of his brother. My brother had a mental imbalance. In 1983, my brother committed suicide. He did it in his car, asphyxiation. I mean, bloodline is bloodline. I think that he blames himself for passing that on to his daughter. Lonnie and I had many private conversations that I never shared with Paul because I was fearful that he would kick her out. He can't handle it. I really feel that Paul is a different man than I married. He's checked out. He's done. I'm more on my dad's side where we're just, we're done and we don't want to do this anymore. I'm not here for Lonnie. I'm here to support my mom and my dad, not for her. Do you have any idea why she expresses so much hate towards y'all? No, I don't. I don't know. Where she is now is not consistent with what her upbringing was. Absolutely. Because yeah. y'all got along. Absolutely. We're happy. There was happiness in the yeah, home. It was a, you got along it was a beautiful as a family. Absolutely. You, you got we along. did things together. And then it turned. Right. I mean, we tried everything we can. We're still trying. There was a lot of enabling because we have no idea what we're doing. And I think that's why she's in this situation. We have no idea what we're doing. So every answer could be the right answer. So we tried everything. You said in 09, she admits using ecstasy but yet you had no clue that she was into drugs, even though she had been expelled before for swapping pills around. I knew she was doing the pills, but at that point, she was wanting to be Joe Cool. And I think she wanted to show people the pills, and um, it was more about just being cool than taking them at that time. At that time. Because she Perhaps had... Perhaps you underestimated the danger there. Well... But I really, I think, because she had, we had pills at home, and they were never touched at that time. You when know? she was 16, she was dating a 23-year-old. You threatened to call the cops, but you never did. Well, she denied it for so long that she never admitted that they were going together. It was just always a group of friends just at the beginning. Just hanging out. You know. In February of this year, mm -hmm. she was arrested for possession of heroin. Right. She said it was not hers. Did you bail her out? Yes. Did you bail her friend out? Yes. Your theory was, I need her out on the street so she has no. access to more drugs? They told me what? there was a jacket that was left in the car, and it was in the pocket of a jacket. And they were set up. <sighs> and they were set up by someone. Yeah. And you believed that? Yeah. 
Let me add that, you know, while I was on probation, I failed 10 drug tests in a row, and I still tried to convince the judge that the lab results were, you know, messed up oh. somehow. <laughs> that's, how, that's how bad will lie to try and, and warm Let me way tell you, I, I had her pinned against the wall when he was in Harris County Jail and says, if you bail him out, I will never speak to you people again, ever. Make a choice. I'm in or I'm out. You bail him out, I'm out. You remember that conversation? Because it's hard for a mother to let her son sit down. He's in there for like six months. Yes. I knew at that very moment he lives or he dies. And I had to make a choice. And the choice was this is a very tough disease, and I had to get tough. And I accessed an anger that I didn't know I had, not at him, but at the drugs. And that's when I said, we're done, we're not moving back, we did not bail him out, and he spent six months, 180 days, in the Harris County Jail. You admit you're still paying for the bail bonds. You, you, you searched her room, you found a black wax pot in there, drug paraphernalia. You hid that from your husband. You didn't tell him. At certain times. I think we're getting way ahead of ourselves here. I don't think this is the day that we should talk to your daughter. Because you, you guys aren't ready. You're hiding stuff from your husband. You damn well know it. She's I not did. hiding anything from me. Well, You're defending her, saying, no, 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 she's not hiding anything from me. Yes, she <laughs> is. You're hiding stuff from your husband. You damn well know it. And I ask you, you say, well, sometimes, sometimes well, not. And I, I mean, come no, on, lady. No, what? I did. She's I not did. hiding anything from me. Well, because Paul Well, was... she told us that she did, so she's either lying to us or she's lying but to it's you. it's a little... Uh... No, because... She said she didn't tell you because you couldn't take it. She was afraid you would kick her out of the house if you knew. I would have. Well, that wasn't the question. The question was, you're defending her, saying, no, 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 she's not hiding anything from me. Yes, she is. Well, she's scared about her daughter going on the street. She doesn't want her on the street, but yet she goes down and bails her out of jail. I told Debbie, at least when he's in jail, you know he has at least limited access to drugs. But she did come back home with us. She was living with us, uh, you, you, and we that, were able to monitor her more. That saved my life. How what? many times did your mom bail you out? Once or twice before. Well, we that's where we are. Dr. Phil, yeah. You don't want to see your kid in jail. Guys, we got, I'm just saying, we got to all be in this together. You, you say, we hey, are. it's OK that I took her out of jail because I came home and monitored her. After that, she sold heroin to an undercover cop. Were you there with her? No. So obviously, you right. can't monitor. Look, here's the, here's the reason I'm saying this. Mm -hmm. If you're going to believe her because you desperately want to, then you're going to undermine anything and everything that I might do, that a treatment center might do. This girl doesn't need to go to rehab. She needs to be in a dual diagnostic center, a dual treatment center, where they deal with the Absolutely. psychological issues that drive this. And that, you know, that is a serious swing at the ball here. And, and, and let me tell you, if y'all sabotage it, not intentionally, but you're making some really bad decisions, and when I'm pointing them out to you, you're saying, well, no, sort of, kind of, well, maybe. Uh, oh, she didn't lie to me. Yes, I did. Well, sometimes I did. Sometimes I... It's like, seriously? Yeah. No, I, I didn't know what to do. <clears throat> I was... I had no one to talk to. But you do now. I You're know, here now. But so that's I'm just why saying I'm, at that time. I'm trying to really cut We're through at the our last here. Resort, Dr. It's been yeah. years. I understand, of this. but you have to you have to stop leaning on your own understanding and listen to professionals here. Okay. Do you okay. see my point? Yeah, I understand. I got you. you guys are I uh, she's I saying I hid stuff from him. No, she didn't. She yes I did. No, she didn't. You don't know because she hid it from you. <laughs> How can you know? Yeah. Right. You are enabling your daughter by hiding her pathology from your husband. You, you, how old are you? 18. 18. You have a child on the end of the row saying, there's been a lot of enabling going on here. Hell, she gets it. She's just 18. I know. Right? This yeah. girl I know. can be dead tomorrow. I know. And she hates you people. I know. That's what she says. I know. She doesn't really, but that's what she says because she's trying to drive you away because she wants 
to remove every obstacle she can that's between her and drugs. I mean, we saw her standing there in a sweatshirt and jeans, she's filthy. Look at her. That's not the beautiful girl that, that y'all raised. I'm concerned that you're not ready. And we're going to blow an opportunity if we go in at half prepared. Because let me tell you what I am going to say to her at some point. You either do what I'm telling you you need to do, or my advice to your parents is to stalk you until you can get busted and violated on a third felony and put in prison for years. Because I would rather have your daughter in jail than have her dead in a gutter week after next. She's not going to like me, and I don't care. I'm not here to make a friend. I'm here to save a life. We're playing hardball here because she's a hard case. She's a heroin addict. So you're in or you're out. I'm hardball. You're in. Hardball. I know. My agenda is we get her off the street, we get her help, or we get her locked up where she can't kill herself. That's what we want. Fine. Lonnie's addiction is not only destroying her, it's tearing apart her parents' marriage, as you can see. It's disrupting the family life. Lonnie was missing for three weeks, and just days ago, her mother Lynn and Mary Lee went in search of her. What they found is why I am so concerned. Okay, this is where Lonnie is, right here. There's three or four or five other houses that these druggies bounce to. Go get her! I just want to talk to her for two minutes. The cops are coming. When 20-year-old Lonnie was caught selling drugs to an undercover police officer and then used as an informant, her family hoped she would put her struggles with drugs behind her. But sadly and predictably, Lonnie's drug use grew worse. When she went missing recently, her mother Lynn and Mary Lee turned into wannabe private investigators in an effort to track Lonnie down. My life has been a constant private eye session. I have not spoke to my daughter in two weeks. She's alone out there. Marilee is my cousin, and she has gone through a lot of these struggles with me. Lonnie's the worst I've ever seen her. I know that she's going to die if we don't get her help. Right. This is the road right here that they told us that we needed to go on. This idiot we thought was maybe actually trying to possibly help her out. Dennis on a wild goose chase. chase. She's alone in the trailer. We're getting close. We're approximately two minutes from the dirt road. Okay, this is where Lonnie is, right here. There's three or four or five other houses that these druggies bounce to. If he hasn't produced her and the cops come, get ready. Because someone's going to jail. We have a missing person. We're waiting for the police. As far as we're concerned, Lonnie's missing. Go get her! I just want to talk to her for two minutes. The cops are coming. Come here, Lonnie, honey. I just want to talk to you. Lonnie. Talk, talk. Okay, Lonnie, I need to take you to some... Do you get help? No, you don't. You? I'm fine. Well, Lonnie, I'm, you're living Mom. with men, honey, that you've known a Stop. week. You're finally away from the boyfriend? But you're with people that you don't know. Oh, I'm not leaving. I'm fine here, and I'm. You don't. You can't make me leave. I'm you not doing nothing. drugs. If you get one more felony, babe, you are going to prison. You're Mom, sick. you're sick. I'm babe. not sick. Mom, stop. I'm done. You have no clothes. Lonnie, look at where you're living. Lonnie, come look on. At me for a you have a Lonnie. family. I want you to get better. I have followed Debbie and Brandon for a long time. I think they're absolutely superb at what they do. I got the number, I called it, and Debbie picked up the phone. I said, I'm begging you for your help. He's gonna die. She said, I'm gonna email the Dr. Phil show. And I said, what? Are you serious? We need Debbie and Brandon now to come get her because we can't do it on our own. Don't start calling the cops for a missing person. You know I'm here, Mom. So you just want to be an addict and live in the dirt. I'm not getting hot. Lonnie, you need to go and get clean at a hospital. You need help. A hospital. So you. She's 20 years old. I wanted to have a chance to live.
At that point, we decided to send Brandon in to lend some help. I just pulled up to Lonnie's house, actually Lonnie's parents' house. I'm going to go inside, meet the family, and figure this thing out. Hi, how are you doing? You Good. must be Lynn. I'm Lynn. Come in. Oh, you're Come so in. welcome, so welcome. Let me introduce Hi, Brandon. You. Hi, how are you doing? Why don't you guys, you know, go ahead and give me a little info about this place that she's been staying at. This area has no street signs, no paved roads. It's dirt and trailers. It's a desolate, dark road. She's known these men her, wait, for wait, eight wait, days. Wait, 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 let me stop you here. Total eight days. strangers. We have no idea. They're 40 and 50 Oh, days. my God. They're, they're like half oh, they're, kids. They're She's 20. Yes. But you did get to see her and talk to her for a little You're bit. It's a good thing that you guys did reach out. Let's go check this place out. Yeah, we need to go about a half mile down the road. OK. All right, I'm pulling into the street where she's staying at. Turn the light off real quick so, so they don't spot us. So we're right up here on the left, that wooden, wood color fence. That's it. Oh, there's a camera on the side of that house right there, like a, oh. a, like a, a, a security camera. Hopefully it's not as bad as we think and we can get her out and get her help. Well, after Brandon spent the night surveilling the area, the family convened the next morning to devise a plan with Brandon and his mother, Debbie. I'm Debbie. Hi, Debbie. I'm Lynn. And this Hi. is Marilee. This is <laughs> Why are we here? She's probably going to die if we don't get to her ASAP. We've got to go in and extract her out of that compound to give her a chance. She can only get out of the trailer right here or right here. We should probably go to this direction first. Okay, so we've got a plan together. We, everybody knows what we're going to do. If any one of you feel in danger, calmly call 911. We are going to get her to LA to talk to Dr. Phil. Well, the next day, they did it. They headed to the trailer park at the end of a dusty road. All right, right now, we're on our way out to the compound, ready to do this extraction. I'm with Paul and Sam, and you know we're going to go get his daughter out of, the, out of this compound. I'm beyond nervousness right now. I'm just ready to do this plan. This is the entrance to the, the compound where all the trailers are. They've got you know blinds up and stuff over their windows. Lonnie! Come out here, it's your dad, I need to talk to you. I see a hole in the fence where she could possibly you know, run out the back. See anything over here, Sammy? Mm -mm. I don't hear anything, I don't see any movement. There's movement. Lonnie! Oh, they nailed this shut. There's people in there, no doubt. Hey, is Lonnie in there? I'm her father and I need to see Lonnie right now. Lonnie was here. Lonnie's here. Two people did come out of the residence and said that you know Lonnie's not here. They don't know who Lonnie is. They've never seen Lonnie. I'm not convinced that she's not inside hiding. You know, I, I, I still think she might be inside there. I can hear her. She's in there. I haven't seen my daughter in I'm worried sick about her. So she, she's not here, but you just found out she doesn't want to talk to us. There's a guy whose nickname is he just came out of the trailer and admitted that he does know where Lonnie is and she is inside the trailer. So you're going to call the cops on me. Lonnie! Quite a ordeal. I'm adding Mary Lee to this. Mary Lee, thank you for being here. First off, thank you for writing. Thank you for reaching out. You've been a real movement in this thing and getting stuff along. Sam, thanks for being there and helping get everything together. Um, Welcome. This is Lonnie's grandmother down here. Hello to you as well. We have a lot of people here that care a lot about this young woman. Um, I'm leaning on these guys to come present, get focused, stop listening to her lies, and hold her feet to the fire yeah. here. What do you think about what you've been hearing me say this whole time? I'm so glad. And it's a family emergency. And this is a family problem, as you can see. And I've seen it for many years. Lonnie was at the trailer. But how are they going to get her past the fence and actually get to have a dialogue with her? You don't want to miss what happened next. We'll be right back.
Lynn and Paul have been trying for years to help their daughter Lonnie beat their addiction to drugs. And like so many parents, they have a lot more love than they do knowledge about what to do. If you've ever been in that world, it is hard. When they kicked her out three weeks ago, they never imagined they'd find themselves in the middle of some trailer park at the end of a dusty road far from the beautiful L.A. suburb that she grew up in. Now, with Brandon and Debbie's help, the family devised a plan to try to get to her. They, they, they just learned that a man that Lonnie was indeed hiding out with it was in that trailer. He threatened to call the cops on them. Um, boy, that's when I wish I'd have been there. <laughs> you better believe he would have met some cops and they met him in a hurry. Uh, but did he? Did. Let's see what happened next. I have a team in place. Paul is talking to the police officer right now, and he has agreed to finally help us get Lonnie out of here. I just overheard that the cop ran this guy's record, and he told him he'd better cooperate with us or he could take him in. So he went inside, and he got Lonnie to come out. There's my daughter. She's out in the open. Lonnie, I haven't seen you in a month. I just, I just want to talk to you. T start talking. I don't want to bury my daughter. You're not going to. I know I have a problem. I know, but I'm staying clean. What do you have? Kill What's your idea? I have a doctor lined up for you. Tell me about it. Yeah, I want to introduce you to to the hey, nurse. to the nurse. Debbie, this is my daughter Lonnie. I appreciate that. I'm Debbie. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm I'm, I'm a nurse and counselor. Okay. And the only reason I'm here is because your family's just worried about me. Your mom and Mary Lee wrote in to Dr. Phil. Do it. I'll think about it. I know you said that. I'm not going anywhere today. I'm telling you that right now. I think we are making a little progress. She's, but she does. She says she wants to think about it. I don't want you bringing this drama here, Mom. I'm not getting high. I'm just trying to stay away from you for a little bit. The only person that they're going to listen to that can actually hold a mirror up in front of them and say, this is what you've done wrong to your daughter, that guy's Dr. Phil. Lonnie is still resisting. Mary Lee is talking to her right now. Just give me, give me two days with you. And I give you my word, God is my witness. I'll never come chasing after you again. I just want you to go talk to Dr. Phil. Please. Whatever. OK, baby, let's go get Can you I started. get my out? You can do whatever you want. We finally got Lonnie to agree to come with us. And she's winning. she went inside, got her stuff, and she's on her way out right now. So here she is coming out. And she's got her stuff, so we got her. took two days, family members, Brandon, and two police officers, but Lonnie finally made it here. So Lonnie, please join us. How are you doing? Good to see you. How are you? Seat right here. Uh, you know why these people are clapping when you walk out? No. I think they recognize that it took some real courage on your part to do that. And I'm glad that you're here. H how do you feel about being here? I'm all right. What's the good and bad about being here? I want finally to get my family help, not just me, but my whole family. We all have major <clears throat> problems. We just need to lay everything out on the table and talk about it and figure something out. It's like you're reading my mind. You know, one of the things that frustrates me, people have heard me say it before, is I have family members that bring kids. This even happened when I was in private practice. And people would bring their kids mm -hmm. and drop them at the therapeutic altar and say, here, fix them and call me when you're done. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, whoa, wait a minute. Come in and set your ass down because kids don't get into these issues in a vacuum. It doesn't happen in a vacuum. And you are exactly right. You are reading my mind. I agree with you 100%. You have serious problems. You are making some serious bad decisions. And this is a family problem. I have had some very hard conversations with your parents already. And they probably don't like me very much right now because i kind of been chewing their ass uh, okay. about what they've done and haven't done. What I've not done is questioned whether they loved you and whether their intention was good.
I know they love me, and but I know their intentions you, are good. That, was that, is that a fair thing? Assessment, yeah. Have you felt chewed out? I'm sorry, but I know. Yeah. It's okay. I, I know. <laughs> but I, I needed you to change your position. I understand. And, but you, and anywhere in there, did you ever hear me say that you didn't mean well and didn't love your daughter? Because you didn't hear me say that because I don't believe that. I believe that you love this daughter very much. I said that your dad would run through a door or climb any mountain to help you. He would lay his life down for you. But he is also a big part of this problem. Your mother, the same thing. She would die for you. But she is a big part of this problem. I, I, I totally get that. Why are you so mad at them? You know, I could sit here today and say, yeah, I have mental problems. I'm a drug addict, up. I've stolen, I've lied, I've cheated. And I could say that on national television, I'm a drug addict. But there's someone else who is a drug addict who is keeping this on the down low, who I think needs to talk about it. Who is that? You're doing heroin and meth. You're hanging around with people named I'm not doing this to hurt you. I'm getting everything out on the table. There's someone else who is a drug addict who is keeping this on the down low, who I think needs to talk about it. Who is that? Do you want to talk about it or you want me to? It needs to get out there. It's a <clears> major <throat> problem. A couple years after my sister was born, my mom was addicted to Norcos, up to 30 a day. Don't start. She got on Suboxone to get off of him. She's still taking Suboxone. No way. No, I'm not. Stop. Hey, I grew up in the 80s. I'll admit, you know how they say if you remember the 80s, you weren't there? I don't remember much of the 80s. I was, you know, I experimented. I, I have been very honest with my children. Very honest. Does Both Lindsay of them. know? She, I've Does been Lindsay know with her. Lonnie, your mom is not a drug addict. I'm, she had a drug problem. You're doing heroin and meth. You're hanging around with people named living in scum. Lonnie, I, I have been taking. Did you have a drug Prozac problem? And Xanax. Yeah, I know, Lon. Were you taking 30, up to 30 narcos a day? What, what are you talking about? Wait, hold Lonnie. on, Paul. She's having a conversation with her mother. Let's let him have it. Be honest. I've, I've, Be honest. I have taken painkillers, yes. Did you have a problem? I don't think Were it was you a addicted? problem. No. Are you an addict? No, I'm not. I'm not. You are a liar, no, mom. I'm not. Like I said. So your point is that she has had a history mm -hmm. of abusing prescription drugs for sure. That when I moved back home, I was on heroin and I wasn't feeling good. And I said, you know, I don't, I don't feel good. And she said, I know, I know how you feel. I know what you're going through. And I said, no, you don't. And she pulled me aside and said, listen, your sister doesn't know. Your family doesn't know. Your dad doesn't know the extent of it. I was addicted to painkillers your whole childhood, up to 30 narcos a day. Mm -hmm. So she knows what detox feels like. She doesn't want the world to know. Okay. Well, did you well, have that conversation? I, and, no, before you answer, this isn't an essay question. Right. You either had the conversation had, or you didn't. We had the conversation. OK. So she acknowledges I, that. So you're an addict. You had a no, drug problem. No, I admitted to you that I have the same brain as you, that I feel the same way. When I take a um, painkiller, I know how you feel. 30 Norcos a day? Say it. I'm a heroin addict. I can say it. Man up and own your shit. All right. <laughs> I'm not doing this to hurt you. I'm getting everything out on the table. I understand. I understand what you're saying. Were you addicted to painkillers? For an amount of time, yeah. OK, and you had to use Suboxone to get off, to, to get off of them. Right. OK, so, so next, what else did you want on the table? That was just a major thing for me because, you know, 
all the attention's on me for being the drug addict, the drug addict, but then you're in the closet. You had your addiction, but no one knew. You were normal. Now they do. Yeah. What else do you want to talk about? You need help. You need more help than just some rehab program. You need a lot of help to get the life that I think you deserve. I do want to make what I think is a, a very unique program available to you. It's not just some rehab program. It's what we call a dual diagnosis program that can truly give you the chance to get traction and become all of who you are. Mandy Baker is here. I, I flew her in here from Texas today. She's vice president, executive clinical director of, uh, of, of the Origins Recovery Center. And I, I want you to do that. And I want you to do it with an understanding and a commitment from me that while you're doing that, these people right here have got a hell of a lot of work that I am going to set up for them to do as well, as much or more work as you're doing, so you have a chance to come home and really have a relationship where there's honesty instead of hypocrisy, where people respect the boundaries in your life, but yet hold you accountable. You've got legal problems, we will help with those as well. I'm willing to make every resource at my fingertips available to you, and they are appreciable. What I need you to do is tell me in all sincerity that you will immerse yourself in this program. Will you do that? Yes, I will. We have a deal. Will you do that? Okay. All right. You can do this. I want to thank this family for being here today. You know, it's not easy sometimes to come air things out on national television, but it is a teaching tool for everybody involved. A special thanks to Debbie and Brandon from VIP Recovery. Link on our website to find these good folks. Uh, also, special thanks to Mandy Baker from Origins. Mandy, thank you so much for being here. Brandon? Hey. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. Thank you. Today on an all new Dr. Phil. Listen to me, Shut up. Shut up. Her daughter is 13. Do you hate your mother? Yes. Do I ever want to go home? No, Mom, you're not home. And out of control. She grabbed the knife and was threatening to kill me. I do not remember that. You, you don't remember banging her head against the sliding glass door? I didn't touch her. One of you's lying. What would you do if you had a 13-year-old daughter and she punched her brother in the face? What if she grabbed you by your mouth and chin and slammed your head into the refrigerator? What if she pulled a knife and held it to your throat and threatened, I am going to kill you? Well, today we're going to meet this teen terror and her mom who says she has completely lost control of her daughter. And she just says, frankly, I, uh, she says, I'm out of options. Listen to me, you idiot! House. Shut up! Talk. Shut up! Do I ever want to go home? No, Mom! You're not home! Do you not see the Do you not see the you put me through? Stop being stupid! Monica says she's so fed up that she would surrender Micaiah to child services. She says, I'd just give her up if I thought it would help. Listen to me, you idiot! 
injecting drugs at my house. Shut up! Talk Shut up! My 13-year-old daughter, Micaiah, is out of control. She is very hateful to me. I do not like you. I can feel that. Do I know you don't. Micaiah tells me that she hates me, that I'm stupid. She calls me a When I'm pissed off and in my room punching the down on my wall, you should not come in there. Micaiah has been arrested twice for third degree assault for assaulting me. The first time Micaiah was arrested, she bit me on the inside of my bicep. Over the last several years, the police have been called to our home about 17 times. Micaiah is a master at manipulating people. I've seen her manipulate the police, doctors, teachers. She was suspended the first part of her seventh grade year. She was caught with tobacco. She's punched a hole in her wall. The hole didn't start out this big. It was one fist size. But over the last several weeks, it has gotten increasingly bigger and bigger. She has been taken to the emergency room numerous times. She's been in juvenile detention center twice. She spent 30 days in an inpatient residential care. And she was placed in a foster home for four months. The last year, Micaiah has run away from home six to seven times. Micaiah has total control over me and my family. When she is gone, it's more peaceful. You piss me off. You piss me off so much that I can't even be in the same house as you. I fear the choices that Micaiah is doing right now will destroy her life and that she may end up dead. Well, Monica's ex-husband, Cliff, the bio father of this child, is listening to the show by phone because there's an order of protection in place. Uh, we won't hear from Cliff until later when I can speak to him privately. But first, I want to talk to Micaiah's mother, Monica. Now, Monica, I'm going to ask you some questions that I think only a mother can give me insight to. See, I think everybody has a way of being in the world. Why is your daughter choosing this way? Well, part of the reason I'm here is to find that out, because I don't know why she's choosing, this, choosing to be this way but I think it, it works for her to some extent. She doesn't feel like I love her. She honestly feels like I don't love her. Um, mm -hmm. She feels like I favor my other three children over her. Do you? I do not. How do you react to her when she gets upset? I try not to show any kind of reaction to her that she's, that she's causing me, <clears throat> you know, that she's causing me to get angry, to get upset, or anything like that. I just try and remain kind of level. I just heard a key word there. You said, I try. If you have ownership in why this girl is doing what she's doing, why she is running so hard, why she is so angry, you need to own it and tell me what it is because you don't want to waste your time with me digging out of you what you already know to be true. What are you doing to screw this up? I don't know. Well, let me tell you what she says you're doing to screw okay. it up. Okay. She says you're two-faced and she absolutely hates you. She says that you've told her you're acting just like your dad. Mm -hmm. True or false? That is true. But I asked you just a few minutes ago, what is it you're doing that's contributing to her maladaptive behavior, her lack of adjustment into this family and into this life? You said, I've got no idea. Well, you've said I would turn her over to Child Protective Services, if I, could, if I thought it'd help, yeah, take her, what go I, with her. That's not what a kid wants to hear. You act just like your dad, who, by the way, you're divorced from. So that's not a ringing endorsement. She says you yell that it's always her fault. She says that you hit and slap her in the face. True or false? False. Never hit her? No. Okay. She says that you put her on meds that don't fit. You've thrown a chair and that you've choked her. Not true. Tells her every day, not occasionally, but every day, I wish I had never had you. Never said that. Those words have never come out of my mouth. She said, during big fights, you say, I so wish I had had an abortion. <sighs> never <clears throat> said that. All right, Monica says last year her daughter was handcuffed and charged with third-degree assault after Micaiah threatened her life. Take a look at this. Micaiah's aggression towards me has gotten so bad that she threatened to kill me with a bread knife. 
She had got suspended from school for having tobacco in her backpack and had tried to blame her sister and her brother for it being theirs. She was mad that her brother had said no, it wasn't his, and so she kicked him in the groin. And I got between the two of them to break the fight up. She pulled out this knife and held it up to me and she told me she was going to kill me. She grabbed me and she was holding the knife and she was going to kill me, bitch, is what she said to me. My 11-year-old son then had to call 911. 911, what's the emergency? She's grabbing a knife and she's trying to hurt my mom. <laughs> is that Michaela doing all the screaming? She was arrested for third degree assault once again. Monica says her 13-year-old daughter, Micaiah, is so out of control, she needed help to get her to the show. We sent a team of professional transporters to Monica's home to help bring her here. Were they successful? Well, let's take a look. Monica? Yes. And then Victor Lopez. Nice to meet you. This is my partner. Lonnie Vasquez. Hi, Lonnie. Hi, how are you? Come on in. I, I can't control her. She's running away. Verbally abusive, physically abusive. We're here to take it from point A to point B safely. Hi, Mikaia, how are you? Good. Did you get my message? No. You know, Connie really wants you to babysit, so. When? Tonight, like mm, about six o'clock. All right. I've got butterflies in my stomach. I'm really nervous about it. My brother Ryan and sister-in-law are gonna pick her up and bring her here. So when they pull up, we'll be in the Suburban. Once they pull up, we will pull up right behind them. I don't know what she's gonna do. I don't know whether she'll be kicking and screaming and swearing. Basically, we expect the worst. All right, she already gave us a three-minute signal. Here we go, ready? Yeah. Next, did she put up a fight? Did she take off running? Did she make it to the show? Or is it going to be just me and mom trying to solve their problems? Find out when we come back. Here we go, ready? Yeah. Monday on an all new Dr. Phil. I'm gonna go get the spanking spoon. He wanted his wife to repent. That's one. You want another one? You said I was spanking the demons out of her. I said she looked like she had demons. The shocking video. Say yes, sir. Were you possessed? That will have everyone talking. I did it to stop the bad behavior. Tell me I'm wrong. You're wrong. That's Monday. text messages that Micaiah has sent me have been horrible. She's told me to f that I'm a f that I'm crazy, that I don't love her. It's very, very hurtful. Well, Monica says her daughter Micaiah ran away from home two weeks ago, so she was worried about getting her to the show by herself. So we sent professional transporters to help Monica get her daughter here safely. Didn't want any drama, wanted everything safe. Take a look. Hi, Mikaia. I want to introduce you to some people that are going to help you. Oh, this yeah. is Victor, and this is Lonnie. I'm going to have to ask you for your cell phone. Why? And we'll explain everything once you get in the vehicle. We can do this the easy way, or we can do this the hard way. Where are you taking me? I'll let you know once you get in the car. You try to run, we're gonna have to chase you down. And then he has handcuffs. I'm not gonna run where would I go? I have no place to go. I'm just pretty pissed off. Uh, you know what? I don't blame you. What was the first thing like you realized, man? I, I did not like my mom. What happened? Um, when she took us away from our dad, then she took me into a mental hospital and put me on like a lot of drugs. As I'm seeing them drive off, I'm worried, I'm scared. I am starting to feel a little bit. I don't know if relief is the right word. It's been a really emotional day. Well, she's made it. Transporters Victor and Lonnie have been with her every step of the way, uh, ensuring her safety and well-being. So, Micaiah, come on out. Okay. Oh, 
Merci. Merci. Okay. Your mother um, is saying that the things that you're saying that she has said to you, done to you, uh, the ways in which she engaged you are just simply not true. So one of you's lying. The truth is that she has said this to me. Every single day I hear it, that she wished she never had me. And when we get into big fights, she tells me that she wished she would have had an abortion. Mm -hmm. So your mother's lying to me. Correct. Why would she do that? Because, like, like <clears throat> I told you when I was on the phone, she is two-faced. She only acts, what's it called, appropriate around me when there is authority around. So if somebody's around that could impact her life or judge her in some way or create havoc for her, then she puts on a goody two-shoes face and behaves differently. Correct. Uh huh. And um, how about the things that we were describing with regard to you about pulling a knife and threatening to hurt people and saying hurtful things? What about that? Well, she told me that I pulled a knife on her. I do not recall pulling a knife on her. What do you mean you don't remember? I, I, I don't remember. I remember because we were in the kitchen. She threw the chair on my legs, and then I was walking across the room to my back door to leave the house, which is when she tackled me on the floor, which is when her hand was around my neck, and then my younger brother was kicking my head, and I, like, passed out. I just remember waking up, and the cops were there, and I was in handcuffs. Uh -huh. Why was your younger brother kicking your head? Because I was biting my mom's arm because I couldn't breathe. And why couldn't you breathe? Because my mom's arm was around my neck. She was choking you? Correct. Did that happen? There were parts of it that um, I would agree on with. Were you on the floor with your daughter with your arm around her neck? I was on the floor with my daughter holding her arms and legs so that she <clears> wouldn't <throat> hurt me, herself, or anybody else. Okay, what, what, what happened that triggered th this where you had... To, you had to do a takedown and restrain her. Um, she had uh, grabbed the knife and was threatening to kill me. Mm -hmm. But you don't remember pulling the knife? Correct, I do not remember that. And you don't remember banging her head against the sliding glass door? I didn't touch her, she touched me. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that Micaia said she never wanted to speak to her mom again, she had a lot to say once they arrived in Los Angeles. Take a look. Why is it come to this point that you have to take me out of my house to drive me all the way to L.A.? I've tried everything else that I know to do By to try and help you. By taking me to mental hospitals and put me on medication, I was working hard to get to a place where I could be stable and not want to kill myself every single night. I understand that. No, you don't understand that, Mom. No, Mom, listen to me. Listen to me. Do you ever go to your room at night and cry and cut? No. Do you? No. 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 Did your mom tell you that she hated you? No. Do you have a giant hole in your wall because you get so pissed off that you don't know what to do? No. Then you have never been through what I have went through. Therefore, you will never understand what I'm going through. Therefore, you will never understand me. That's why I'm trying to you know find nothing that about out. Me. Do you know my best friend? No. Do you know anything about me? No. But I do I not want to talk to you because I do not like you. I can, I can feel that. Do I know you don't. Do you understand that? I don't understand that, and I'm exactly, trying to understand that. Exactly, because you will that. never understand that. Do you think that I really need medication? I, I don't know. I, I'm thinking that medication I think you're full might. Of so shut up! I do not like you. I hate you, Mom. I've heard Get you that say that through your head. And and where you've been staying with Emily, that's a better situation. Obviously, have I left? No. You're just pissed off because she can still be a better mother to me than you can ever be. Do I ever want to go home? No, Mom, you're not home. Emily is my home. Emily is my mother, not you. Do you hate your mother? Yes. Why? Because of everything that she has put me through. I have been through hospitals, therapists that have not helped me, medication that have left me in my bathroom wanting to kill myself. Have you attempted to kill yourself? Yes. Five times? More than that. Well, you've been hospitalized for it five times. Correct. You understand that your behavior means that somebody has to do something to protect you from yourself. But the thing was, my behavior <clears throat> wasn't like that until I went to the hospitals. 
until the first time I went to the hospital, I came out, I was and not the same. Why did you wind up in the hospital? Because my mom took, took me there because she didn't want me around the house. So she just thought, you know, it's just too crowded here, I'm going to take her to the hospital. Pretty much. Now, you don't believe that. I do, honestly. You, you have no ownership in it whatsoever? Correct. Okay, uh, Makaya says her mom ruined her life by keeping her away from her father. We're going to find out what he has to say about all this when we come back. Can I go and live with my dad? I want to know why I cannot go and live with my dad. She took me away from my dad. He's always been there for me when my mom hasn't. Here's a picture of our family when Micaiah was only three. And at some point, Micaiah has cut me out of the picture. She's angry at me, and she doesn't want me in there. It's really, really sad. Monica says her 13-year-old daughter, Micaiah, has assaulted her twice, pulled a knife on her, shoved her, bitten her, bullied her siblings, and now wants nothing to do with her. Monica says Micaiah's bad behavior spiraled out of control when her marriage went south. My ex-husband and I separated five years ago. I think that that has had an impact on Micaiah's behavior. Can I go and live with my dad? I want to know why I cannot go and live with my dad. Because the, your dad hasn't done the necessary things. Micaiah was close with her dad prior to the separation. Micaiah was definitely her dad's favorite child, and they spent a lot of time together, just the two of them. She took me away from my dad. My dad was like the biggest role model in my life. He's always pushed me to do my best. He's always been there for me when my mom hasn't. Uh, you say all of this really upsets you, what she's saying now about all this, why? Well, there's a lot of reasons why. Number one, her dad has not been involved in her life since really 2009. And in um, 2011, he was, um, he could only have supervised visits with the kids. And then in 2012, that changed to therapeutic supervised visits with the children. He's been kicked out of three different um, institutions that's, that, that oversee these supervised visits. Furthermore, when he had those super when he did have visits set up there were many many times where the other three kids would go and Mikaia didn't want to go because she didn't want to see her dad i refused to see my dad for like was it like about a year mm -hmm. but that was because the the what's it therapist that my mom was making me see at the time she told me not to okay so why is he under a protective order where i can't even talk to him with you two here um, he's under, there's a protection order in place with me because of domestic violence. So what do you want? What do I want? Mm -hmm. I want to be happy. I want this to be resolved. I do not want to go home with my mom. And where would you live over the next couple of years? Uh, like for now, I want to live with Emily, which is who I've been staying with. And who is that? My best friend's mom. Have you done anything maladaptive there? No. Hmm. You don't hmm. steal, fight, tear hmm. stuff up. Do drugs. Run away, do drugs. I don't do drugs in her house. No, she does not know that I do drugs. Well, she does now. Does she know you drink? <laughs> what? Does she know you drink? No, that's, that's a drug. Um, all right, I'm going to excuse Monica and her daughter now so I can talk to the father uh, in this, Monica's ex-husband, Cliff. There's a protection order in place. The three cannot be in any kind of contact, even through me or on the phone or whatever, uh, regarding Cliff and his ex-wife. I'm going to talk to him when we come back, and then we'll come up with a plan here. We'll be right back. You make me miserable. You piss me off. You piss me off so much that I can't even be in the same house as you. Uh, what would make a 13-year-old hate her mother so much that she refuses to live with her? Well, uh, people have different points of view and opinions. I'm going to ask her father, Cliff, uh, that oh. very question. What do you have to add to the understanding here about uh, what I might be able to use to help your daughter? So, in, in, in my opinion, um, 
Monica played the victim very well. Yes, is there, is there a restraining order? Absolutely. Now, do you know the circumstances behind that? I don't think you do, and uh, Monica probably won't tell you this, but um, she tried to break down my door to my apartment, and I called the cops. They came out. Um, they were going to arrest her, and I didn't want that when we were separated, and I called her over and over and over and over, and I got charged with phone harassment, which is under domestic violence. We had, we had uh, uh, joint custody of the kids, and she was talking to the kids about stuff, and I defended myself and got them involved in adult issues, told them that their mom was a liar, and I got in trouble for that, and I paid, and we started doing supervised visits. The judge ordered supervised visits, and she said, if the kids are asking to do supervised visits outside, uh, do, do stuff outside of the supervised visits, and both parties agree to go ahead and do it. Well, the kids were asking, McKay in specific was asking to do things outside of those supervised visits. She wanted to go to lunch, she wanted to go fishing, she wanted to go camping. And each week I sent emails to Monica saying, hey, McKay is asking to do this. And the judge says it's okay if we both agree, and she wouldn't agree. After that fourth week is when McKay started throwing fits and, and doing this. And so... The supervised visits um, changed when Monica got a therapist to write a letter that said that Micaiah and Bo needed therapeutic visits. Well, mysteriously, that therapist was no longer used after that order was changed to therapeutic visits. So every time we made progress, something happened, a letter from a therapist, or uh, Monica would contact the the therapist and say, hey, Cliff was telling the kids that underage drinking's okay. We need to stop these visits. And they would believe her. Can I, can I jump in here a second? Absolutely. Um, is there anything that you can share with me that would help me help your daughter find some peace? You know, if Monica isn't helped, McKay won't get helped. If I'm not helped, McKay won't get help. Okay, let me, let me rephrase the question. Uh, is there anything you can tell me that would help me help your daughter find some peace? I can't, I'm really not here to try to improve your relationship with Monica. I don't think you want to reconcile with her or she with you. What I'm interested in is if there's anything you can share with me that I can use to help your daughter find some peace in her life. Yeah, if she, if she has a father, she's been begging for a father, and... If um, outside influences can stop sabotaging the progress with that, that's what can help. What is your opinion of why Micaiah is so violently angry? My opinion is she feels that Monica is keeping her from her father. She has said it many times that she wants to be with me, and Monica does anything and everything to prevent it. Okay, so you think if she was with you that the anger would resolve? I'm, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm thinking that if she could spend time with me, not necessarily be with me full time, I don't want to take her from her mom. I want to enhance her life and get that anger out of her. And if she can spend time with her father, she can have both parents in her life, which she needs both parents. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very difficult to co-parent with you and Monica having so much anger and angst that is obviously very raw between the two of you? Um, she's never been willing to co-parent, even when, when, even when the, the anger wasn't there. She's always been controlling and manipulating and wants to make all the decisions. All she right. was always that way. All right, gotcha. All right, Cliff, I'm going to have to say goodbye for now. You'll be able to continue listening as we wrap things up here. Uh, next, is there any way for McKay and Monica to call a truce? I'm going to bring them back out. I'm going to tell them what I think needs to happen here after the break. I have three other children. Micaiah's behavior is very difficult with the other kids. They wished Micaiah would go live someplace else. My daughter, Kylie's very mad at Micaiah for what she's doing. She's hurtful to my brothers. She just wants to feel like everything revolves around her. I'm really mad at her. It's very scary for all of the kids.
Okay, well, there's another sister involved here, and that's Kylie, right? Yes. Your sister, Kylie. What's the truth here? And I, I hate to put you on the spot, but all I'm trying to do is help this family, and I can't do it if I don't know the truth. My mom's a very loving mom, and she's trying to help Micaiah. She's trying as hard as she can. She just wants the best for her, and she doesn't know why she feels angry. And when she's punching walls and re is refusing to get my mom's help, she doesn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. How do you get along with your sister? We get along most of the time, but as soon as something makes her angry or upset, then she just goes off and then we lose that connection. Mm -hmm. um, have you heard your mother say to her numerous times, I'm sorry I ever had you, I wish I'd gotten an abortion, any no, of that? No, I've never heard her say that. This is not a Micaiah problem. It's not like you're the bad seed here, you're the bad kid, you're the one that's the screw up, and if we could just get you fixed, this family would be fine. Why are, you, why are you shaking your head? Because it's not just then, then why do I feel like that? When I'm over here getting therapy, nobody else is doing therapy. It's all just me. You're all just playing the game. I'm actually over here working. I was working with Tanya. I was working with everybody, Mom. I was working so hard to get to a place where I could control my anger and let it out in a positive way. That's why I was punching my walls instead of cutting and instead of taking it out on you. So if you had a choice, me cutting myself or me punching holes in my wall, which would you pick? The holes in the wall, I guess? Exactly. You're not the first angry young girl that I have talked to. Um, I, I get that you're really upset right now. And frankly, I don't look at you and ask myself why you're upset, angry, cutting, knocking holes in walls, running away, medicating yourself with drugs or alcohol. I really ask myself, why not? The behavior really went off the rails about the time you and your husband started having a lot of trouble and you wound up getting a separation and a divorce. Mm -hmm. You know, for every action in this world, there's a reaction. And I think when that family started falling apart and everybody started choosing up sides and everything got hostile, you kind of got marginalized. You kind of got pushed over to the side here. He said, well, okay, so I'll make my own way. But it's not you. It's this whole family. I totally get that. Are you willing to go home stop doing alcohol, stop smoking dope, and live harmoniously with your mother in your home? No. I think if I'm over here looking at you from her point of view, I don't see a soft place to fall at all. Right. You've withdrawn emotion here to a degree, have you not? Yeah, it's a learned behavior, and I have, absolutely. You're going to have to get over this hostility with your husband. I, I don't know, you know, I, I've got some information about why, why y'all got a divorce. It's still very raw. You, you take great pleasure in dogging on him, and he takes great pleasure in dogging on you, in my opinion. I ask him, you know, what can I do to help your daughter? What can you tell me that would help me help your daughter? And he spent 75% of the time telling me uh, what a saboteur you are. You two need to get this resolved, and I'm willing to get you some help with that, very specialized help with that, and I'm willing to offer you some very specialized help as well. But there is no point in her doing the things she needs to do if this family doesn't do what it needs to do, because you can take her off and get her happy in a vacuum over here, off by herself, and she comes back into this toxic environment, it's going to be the same way it was before she left. There is no point in helping her if you people don't change your game. Mm -hmm. No point in it. No point in it. She didn't choose any of this. The adults in this situation chose that, and she got caught in the crossfire. So what do you think about what I'm saying? I think that's 100% correct. Thank you. Um, I don't want you I don't want you to go home.
This is Matt Polachek right here. Matt, raise your hand. This is Matt Polachek here. He's from a place out here in California called the Center for Discovery. Um, it's down in Whittier. And I want to introduce you guys to Matt and let you talk backstage. But going home with her, to me, is not an option. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> These days, it seems like so many young girls are struggling like Micaiah. Well, there are other options. Next, I have a big announcement about my wife, Robin and how she's helping girls all over America become confident, empowered, and strong young women. We'll be right back. Okay, I am here with my wife, Robin, who has been working incredibly hard on her foundation when Georgia smiled, the Robin McGraw Revelation Foundation. It's been such an incredible year since launching the foundation, and we have been so busy. We're helping shelters, providing legal services to women and children, and doing all we can to improve the lives of those affected by domestic violence so they can live safe, healthy, and joy-filled lives. And that's just the beginning. Well, it's just the beginning because I have some big news. Uh, but first, we're going to invite someone very special to join us. Please welcome the CEO of Girl Scouts of the USA, Ana Maria Chavez. How are you? Good morning. Good to see you. Good, Good to see you. Now, the reason I've asked Ana to join us is because she is involved with some big plans with Robin's Foundation. I love this woman and everything Girl Scouts stand for. They help build girls of courage, confidence, and character. And who wouldn't want all of those qualities? And today I get to play the role of proud husband because I've been given the honor of sharing some huge news. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. I am thrilled to announce that my wife, Robin McGraw, has just been named the celebrity spokeswoman for Girl Scouts of the USA. This is so in her wheelhouse because Girl Scouts have been instrumental in shaping girls into success stories. Did you know that almost every female astronaut was a Girl Scout? Some right. of the biggest celebrities were Girl Scouts too. For example, Dakota Fanning, I love her, Taylor Swift, Gwyneth Paltrow, Venus Williams, and Michelle Obama. excited to have her support and the support of her amazing foundation when Georgia smiled because they promised to help us with our major campaign called to get her there it is the largest fundraising campaign for girls leadership in the history of the United States so thank you for your support <laughs> thank you so much. Well, I cannot tell you how much this means to me I was actually a Girl Scout growing up my entire life and I have to tell you, I was a brownie leader before we ever even had children. Of course, we never had a daughter, but... Seriously, <laughs> we're married for like months, and I come home and she says, I got a brownie troop. I did. So, I did. We don't have a daughter. I, did. I know. I, did. I called the Girl Scout Council when we were first married. I said, yes, I'd like to volunteer. I want to volunteer to be a brownie leader. And they said, great, great. What school does your daughter go to? I said, well, I actually don't have a daughter. I have no children, newlywed, but I still want to volunteer. And they said, wow, this is a first. But I got myself a brownie troop, and it was so much fun. They were just adorable, adorable. I made one mistake. I read the, the uh, uh, newsletter out loud to them before I really scanned it. And I said, oh, girls, we're going to have a camp out, citywide camp out. They got all excited. And then I went, oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. We're not eligible. Oh. First year brownies. Of course, they're all crying. They all start crying. I'm like, oh, what have I done? We'll have a camp out in my backyard. <laughs> and we did. And they loved it. I'm sorry. Oh, they loved it. 
Well, Robin, we have a little surprise for you. We received some video messages oh. from your biggest Girl Scout fans. Here's what oh. they had to say. Hi, Robin. Some people think Girl Scouts is for the younger girls, but I'm a junior in high school, and I'm still a Girl Scout. I love how you support young women to become strong, healthy, and help others. Hi, Robin. I am 13 and love how you care about how Girl Scouts believe we can be and do anything by standing up for ourselves and having strong values. The issues of violence and abuse are very close to my heart. It is encouraging to me when persons such as Robin create programs that can help prevent abuse. She is an inspiration to me and to so many others. I was watching when Robin said, If you allow other people to erode your good opinion of yourself, you're giving them power over you. It helped me to believe in myself. The only opinion that matters is yours. you both to say that. Well, the Girl Scouts of the USA is collaborating with When Georgia Smiled, which is an amazing foundation, and they're going to help us enable girls across the country to reach their potential. You know, Girl Scouts has been around for 102 years. We've provided after-school programming for girls to allow them to become the leaders they want to be in their lives. And so for us, it's about creating new memories with them. It's about enlightening them and educating them so they can place a major, major focus on not only on their lives, but how they can change lives in their local communities. To help transform as many girls' lives as possible, my foundation, When Georgia Smiled, is joining forces with Girl Scouts of USA to get her their fundraising campaign to do just that. We all must be diligent and passionate in our support for girls, and it begins today. Uh, we'll tell you how you can help girls across the country when we come back. Well, I am here with my wife, Robin, and CEO, Ana Maria Chavez. We've just announced that Robin is the celebrity spokesperson for Girl Scouts of the USA. And adult members in every U.S. zip code, and we're in over 90 countries in the world. But we also have 30,000 girls on wait lists nationwide who want to join, but cannot because we have a shortage of volunteers. I mentioned earlier that we need your help to ensure that every girl in every zip code has an opportunity to become a Girl Scout. Go to girlscouts.org join for more information. If you want to support Girl Scouts, you can also go to Robin's website, whengeorgiasmile.org. All contributions will go directly to the Girl Scouts of the USA to invest in girls so they can change the world. Of course, the Girl Scouts didn't come empty-handed. I mean, who doesn't love their cookies? <laughs> Of course, the Thin Mints. I have a box of Girl Scout cookies for everyone in the audience. I want to thank all of my guests and a special thanks to Ana Maria Chavez. And congratulations to you, Robin. I am so proud of you. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. I'm Anthony. Nice I'm the resource director here at the show. This is Dr. Matt Palachek. Did you have a chance to think about it? It's better than going home. That's damn right. Let's get moving. Dr. Phil said some pretty inspiring things. It made me happy that he actually told my mom that's not all my fault. I think that's great, and I think it's definitely a start. We're moving in the right direction.